Arise, take your place, be enthroned on our of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. All right. Arise, arise, arise. A new day in the land of the living as we bless God for making it possible this morning. We thank Him for His grace, His love, and His mercy. Amen. We serve a mighty God. He loves us. And we bless Him this morning. And we wish that we can serve Him the way that He wants us to. Amen. So every day we strive to serve Him and give Him the praise that He rightly deserves. Amen. Let's bless our God this morning. Father, we just thank You for this new day You have given us. As we humble before you as God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the only wise God. Father, we just humble before you this morning. We humble before you. We humble that you can truly be our God this morning. We thank you, Father. No other God like you this morning. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever Amen have your way, Father. Rule and reign in this segment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, come and inhabit the praises of your people. How many of God's people do we have out there tonight? <laughs> Sing this with me. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. Yeah. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Come on! We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Yeah! We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. We lift! We lift you up, we lift you up. Up on our praises, yeah. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Arise, take 
Wake up, brethren. Arise and face this brand new one. The Lord has allowed us to encounter this morning. Bless the King this morning. Arise. Hallelujah. It's called Arise right here on the Church Radio as we welcome you once again to this segment. We thank you so much. If this is your normal, normal musing in the morning, your normal habit, that's part of your diet, dietary supplement, we thank you so much for making Church Radio the place that you tune to listen. As we always ask God to be inspired by Him, to be led by Him. Whatever we speak, whatever we dispense is worthy. So we bless God this morning, thank God for each and every soul this morning. We thank Him for our very life. We serve a mighty God and we are here to sharpen each other. To keep believing that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'll just step out this morning if you get there for 7.30, keep it moving. Those on the phone lines, good morning to you. 641-793-0192. One more time, if you're stepping out and you want to be listening on your phone, you want to dial to listen. You know that too. Technical savvy. Just want to dial. 641-793-0192. For those a little more savvy and you know you have a phone that's with the uh, apps and everything like that. You can go to the market or your play store and look for Choice Gospel Network. Download the app. And share it. And those who have it already, go ahead. Share it every day. Share it with somebody. Somebody might be looking just for this right here. To keep them and to help sustain them. All right? Hallelujah. Those on the website, good morning to you. www.choicegospelnetwork.com One word. Choicegospelnetwork.com Good morning to each and every one. Those on 92, wherever you're listening. We bless God for Jesus. He is the Christ. Amen. So as you step out this morning, guys. Pick up yourself. He's coming along with us this morning. All right. How can I say thanks for everything you've done? And how can I give praise? Lord, you've given me so much. Sacrifice of praise Oh, I lift it up to you Lord, I give my heart away Oh, I give it all to you Lord, make my life an offering Let me worship Sunshine and in rain Sunshine 
sacrifice of praise Oh, I lift it up to you And Lord, I give my heart away Oh, I give it all to you Lord, make my life an offering Let me worship you in everything I do A sacrifice of praise I give to you A sacrifice of praise Telling you, we have to give him. He deserve it. He's God. <laughs> Amen. So we bless him this morning. It's gonna rise on the Choice Radio. Seventeen minutes past the hour. Seven o'clock right here. God bless you as you tune in this morning. God bless you. God bless you. secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music to you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall and the major lift the baffled king composing hallelujah hallelujah took the name in vain I don't even know the name But if I did, well really, what's it to you? There's a blaze of light in every word It doesn't matter what you heard The holy or the broken Hallelujah Hallelujah I did my best, it wasn't much I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool you And even though it all went wrong I'll stand before the Lord of song With nothing on my tongue but how
poderoso Deus Aleluia Santo Santo É o Senhor Poderoso Deus Digno Senhor Digno If you're getting there for 7.30, you gotta be close by. It's called Arise on Choice Radio. Good morning to everyone. We bless God. In <laughs> we guess, but we just bless Him this morning. We bless Him. We bless Him. We bless Him. We feel so lifted this morning. As God is faithful, amen. Stepping out this morning as a child of the Lord. Keep stepping. You're in good company this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We praise you for what you have done in our life and what you continue to do. There is no life without you, Jesus. Bless your holy name this morning. Glory, glory, glory to God. Amen. Psalms 103 said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgeth for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and precious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always child, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as the father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, 
as a flower of the field. So he flourished it, for the wind passed over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto the children of men, unto, unto children's children, sorry, to such who keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye host, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. <laughs> we bless God this morning. Hallelujah. If you get in there for 7 30, you gotta be close by. I want you to help me sing a simple song. It's gonna rise. It just says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, yeah, you know it. Sing, Lord, I love to sing your praise. Say, I'm so glad you're in my life. Oh, my, my, my.
that moment where freedom might receive Heaven knows where I would be if it wasn't for your mercy My sins are not forgotten, yet you remember me God this morning hallelujah somebody scream out we've been delivered hallelujah my God hallelujah in the river of the Lord my God hallelujah I'm telling you what a declaration this morning. Good morning to you. All those on the front line for Jesus. Good morning. Hey, glory to God. We bless God. I meet a lot of people all the time that are on fire for the Lord Jesus. And that helped to keep my fuel going. Of nurses that we know that were, you know, on the job, they always speak about Jesus, pray for the patients. And, you know, that's just what it's all about, brethren. Jesus Christ is Lord. And we are redeemed, brethren, you know, redeemed by Jesus. We bless him because he has delivered us. Glory to God. So we bless him and, we, you know, we thank him for what he has done. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's amazing about God because you know God 
God is just God. And it, it's so amazing when you meet people who understand what has been done to them, what has happened to them in their life. And yesterday I was talking to a brother of mine and, you know, he always emphasized born again. And, and, and that, you know, that's what happened today. The world does not talk about born again when that's the most important thing about Jesus. We must be born again. Otherwise, we cannot inherit the kingdom. It's not just a cliche. It's not a talk. It's a serious thing. We must believe the word of the Lord. We must believe Jesus. He said, I, I told you heavenly things. If I tell you earthly things, you have a problem. I tell you heavenly things. I came from there. I know what's going on. The requirement is flesh and blood cannot. You must be born of the water and spirit. Uh, you know, it's, it's so important when you meet people who understand that born again, you know, you know, identification. A new man in Christ. Hallelujah. New desire. And you, you know what I mean? So we just bless Jesus for what he has done. And we bless God for, you know, sending his son to us. That we understand our, you know, defilement with him. And, and you know, the need to be born again. And so we encourage you to be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Find out about it. Do your research. You know, we have enough in, you know, we have enough information now available to us to be born again. Jesus said we must be born again. Every man. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Isaiah 32, the word of the Lord says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. Amen. And the princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest. Amen. Hallelujah. As rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Amen. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Amen. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful, for the vile person will speak valiny. Amen. And his heart will work in iniquity. Amen. To practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord. To make empty the soul of the hungry. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devised wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when the needy speak it right. For the liberal device it liberal things and by liberal things shall he stand rise up ye woman that are at ease hear my voice ye careless daughters give air unto my speech many days and years shall be shall ye be troubled ye careless woman for the vintage shall fail the gathering shall not come tremble ye woman that are at ease be troubled ye careless ones strip you and make you bear and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They also, they shall lament, sorry, for the tents, for the pleasant field, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the place, the palaces, sorry, shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall, shall be left, the forts and the towers shall be for the dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flock, until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever hallelujah and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwelling and in quiet resting places when it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in low place blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that send forth hither the feet of the ox and the ass. The word of the Lord. Isaiah 22 this morning. Glory to God. If you're getting there for eight, you can be late. You should be close to the gate. Amen. We bless God this morning. I'm going to have to preach on this song. Good morning to my beautiful one. It's going to rise. Let's step to it one more day. Listen. I want to 
lost in sin Jesus took me in I've been alive from heaven filled my soul He built my heart with love Wrote my name above Just to talk with Jesus makes it all right Say it again now once we're lost in sin Jesus took me in I've been alive from heaven filled my soul oh, He built my heart with love Wrote my name above Talk with Jesus, man. Right. Come, 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 let us have a little talk. Jesus. Tell God about your love. He'll hear the pain that's crying. Yeah. Oh, feel the pride we love. Know that the fire. Burn it. Just sing it and talk with Jesus, man. Right. Say it again, say it again. Say, have a little talk with Jesus. Jesus. Tell God about your love. Bless God this morning. Hope you're in a good mood this morning, brethren. We just bless the Lord. We got to have faith in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Don't care what it feel like. Don't care what's happening around you. We got to hold on to this Word. This Word is real. Amen. This book is life. Yes, indeed. Hope you're in a good mood this morning. We bless God for Jesus. Thank you so much, everybody. Those of you praying for us, thank you so much. Hallelujah.
indeed. <laughs> hey, Sancha, good morning to you. Day in Toronto, good morning to you. The Blue Family, North Carolina, good morning to you. Sister Eileen, oh, day in Toronto, God bless you. Our sisters in Jersey, Xavier, Roye, Eileen. Hallelujah, Eslin, bless God for you. Sister Patricia O'Day in St. Martin. And all over the world, everybody. Hallelujah. We bless God for Jesus. Sister Paulette in the Bronx, good morning to you. Sister Claudette in Harlem. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. All of you, wherever you are, so many people. We bless God for you. Keep praying for us right here on Choice Radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. We have taken up our cross. And you know, a cross is not easy to bear. Hallelujah. But we bless Jesus. He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And he doesn't. He's right here with us to keep us going. Keep our fire blazing. And we bless him this morning. So we want to encourage you. If you're a father of Jesus, believe the king. The king is alive. Hallelujah. He's walking with you. Keep your head up. Hallelujah. Let's sleep to serve him this morning. He's worthy of all our praises. All glory and honor. He is God. We bless him. Hallelujah. So God bless you this morning as you step out.
Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. His faithful love endure forever. You got to believe that. That is something you got to believe. You got to identify with. Every individual must know whether you're male or female. You got to know if you're born again. You got to know if you're in the kingdom. You got to know if you're right with God this morning. And that's the call. We bless God this morning for those who don't know the king this morning. Those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I mean, talking about having a real identification, having a real encounter with Jesus. And that is what he wants. What a father. He wants you to know for sure that you know him. So important. You know, sometimes when you talk like that, people think it's a boast, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 brethren. You just don't say God. Amen. God wants you to know if you're born again. If you're a man, you must know you're a man. If you're a woman, you have to know you're a woman. Amen. If you're feeling hot, you got to know. Take off your coat or turn down the heater. You got to know. Everybody got to know. We have the senses and we have the things that will produce those things. And that's what God is saying. That's why when you talk about born again, somebody get offended. Well, yeah, well, you, what you talking about no but Jesus said you must be born again that you can understand and know and really have an experience with God that God can change you from having one way and having another way so you can see the difference of where you used to be where you are now amen the desires you have before and what you have now you know is an experience so it's something that God wants us to tangibly experience that we know our father is real we know that God is real we know when we came into Christ we know we have the experience so that's what God wants he really wants that he doesn't want us to just follow a religion oh I was born this oh my mother was that oh my grandmother was that so I'm gonna die. no no that's not God is not saying that God never said that hallelujah every dispensation of the God is given information that is relative important for that generation amen so when he gives the information that is relevant to us we have to hearken to the voice of the Lord he is the one that is leading and guiding us so we just have to have that mentality hallelujah glory to God you know you know back in the days like you see your mother like she take a chicken and she cut it up and you know cut up these pieces and put it in the you know oven and and today you have a big oven and you cut up the chicken the same way you say you're doing it as your grandmother but if your grandmother was here she'd say why you have to cut it up Look how big the oven is. Just put the whole thing in. You know what I mean? But she was doing it at the time because the compartment of the oven was not big enough. So she cut it up. So you think it's a style? No. Now you have a big compartment. Just put the whole chicken in and just burn it. You know, you know, you don't have to burn piece first and take out this and put this other piece and put more fire. No. You have one big compartment. So, hey. Amen. Glory to God. So as information become relative to us and relevant and, uh, you know, we as the followers of Jesus and people of God, we need to understand what God is saying and be willing to move where he's showing us. And that's why he said the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. Things that you never thought was relevant to the body of Christ and stuff like that. Later on, God will show you how those things go along, hand in hand with the whole function of the body of Christ. And that's why we see in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4. Let's take a look there for a minute. I was going to read something from Hebrews here. The Lord just put me on this in Hebrews. But I'm going to just go and take this from Ephesians that I know is there. It's Ephesians. It's a very important scripture. I don't think we pay enough attention to it. But God is a very balanced God. And God wants His children to be perfected. And that's so important for us. You know what I mean? There are many people, some things they hear is totally abstract from the conversation as a Christian. And they should be well you know verse or should be having some sort of information as to what taking place in the background that they can stand and the faith in God hallelujah amen my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge amen you might know a lot about a Jesus and certain things you don't know you get defeated in that way because you didn't know you were not rounded hallelujah bless the name of the Lord Jesus we bless God this morning brethren hallelujah let's read I want to read Ephesians 4 we're going to get him. We're going to open the phone lines. We're going to do what we normally do as we dispense information and we strive to live to what God has called us for. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe everybody have a calling from God and that's we identify and identify with him and we learn to hear his voice more and more. That's really what it's all about. So we would like everybody to get that place where they, it's about God, you know, the word of God. The Ephesians 4 and 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Amen. So remember many are called and few are chosen. Well, we have to walk worthy of the call. So God is very serious. He love you. But he wants you to understand this is kingdom business. Let's take it serious. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all amen hallelujah but uh, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ wherefore he saith, when he ascend up to on high he let captivity captive and give gifts unto men now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth question he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above heaven that he might fill all things amen and he gave some apostles and some are prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ amen so important for the edifying of the body of Christ why my people perish for lack of knowledge you might love Jesus all you want and you die from something so simple and easy that you because you just been ignorant to other areas of life hallelujah but we just read in Ephesians he have filled all things high and low amen glory to God so the Lord is saying that he is above and below he's everywhere and has given us all the necessary information that is relevant to our sustaining in the world hallelujah everything in between so God has done that which he have done and we believe that and that's it because what I've realized in my Christian work there are people that have different inclination about different things that I never really thought relevant and then later on you know God will show you yeah of course that's all this make up the important information that will make you perfect in the faith or make you a whole person you know somebody say why don't you just talk about Jesus yeah you could talk about Jesus Jesus talk about all kinds of stuff Jesus dealt with all kinds of area of life and that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be because you have somebody in the body of Christ that just into computers or they into this they into that there is something in there that will be relevant to the body of Christ you understand and that's the way God has designed the system that the body of Christ can be what perfected for the perfecting of the saints hallelujah for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ so many people if they don't understand what you're talking about they think well oh you're crazy oh that's not important we're just gonna talk about Jesus no <laughs> amen everything is important for the body of Christ that's why God has set up the, the, the church where it's not one kind of food it's a complete balanced diet that every man can be utilized in his capacity based on the gift of the Spirit of God. That's the Word of God. It's not anything we're trying to orchestrate. We're just saying. We have just read it. Amen. God has given gifts. Let's go back here and look at it. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He has given the gifts according to the measure of Christ. For the measure. Amen. Every man has a measure of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You have a measure. Every man has a measure. God has given every man a measure. So it's so important that, you know, we, we are willing to adhere and listen to what God is saying because every piece of information is relevant to the perfecting of the child of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. We bless God. We bless God. We bless God for what he has done. And we, we pray that we have the boldness of God. You know, you know God wants his children to be bold <laughs> concerning the things concerning the kingdom. You know what I mean? That you know that you know that you know that, hey, that's not of God. That this is God. You know what I mean? That you're able to stand for yourself because the thief come to do what? To steal to kill and to destroy hallelujah that's why Jesus is our only high priest we only hear him we follow them as they follow Christ whoever they am is <laughs> you understand so it's so important for you to be strong in the Lord this morning you listen to the program and you know whatever it is and what God is saying to us that we strong within ourselves that we are going to walk out our own salvation with fear and trembling of the Lord Jesus amen we don't care who is it mother father husband nobody's making us go where we don't want to go glory to God bless the name of the Lord Jesus all right so we get to the eight o'clock mark this morning the Lord put some on my spirit this morning I want to just talk about a little bit something's been going on in the background I want to just for a minute all right so um Hebrews 12 hallelujah he said wherefore seeing we also are compassed about a great cloud of witnesses amen let us lay aside every weight and sin which do it so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith amen who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame 
and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Hallelujah! Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. Hallelujah! For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, therefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Hallelujah! Furthermore, we have had fathers of the, our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them service, uh, reverend, sorry. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Question. For the for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Amen. So we bless God for Jesus, the word of the Lord this morning. And, and, you know, that's just on my own, you know, little experience with the Lord. The Lord will bring you to a scripture just like that. And my wife do that too sometimes. It's like, you know, she say, okay, she pray, Father, da, 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 you know, da, da, da. And she just go to a scripture and she just read and she say, oh, well, wow, you know, today I was just thinking about that. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and so God has always done that. So, so you know, whatever we, we call it, but, you know, that's one of the ways God, you know, show you what to read or whatever it is. And so every one of us have different ways that we, you know, deal with God or how we try to get what to read or, you know, you know. Amen. So we we bless the Lord Jesus. I want to encourage you. I always feel led on the radio to let the people who know that there is a God find God in their own way. Find Him and be able to align with Him through the Word of God, being born again and be led by the Spirit of Jesus. Because what we have experienced, I mean, over the time, it makes you believe that just because you belong to a church, you know God. That's not true. That's the worst thing. That's the furthest thing. That has nothing to do. God don't want any man to feel comfortable because he go to some building and feel that he know God. You must be born again and be led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is neither here nor neither there. It's everywhere. Hallelujah. We give him praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're listening to the program this morning, we bless God for you. So uh, uh, this morning, I want to just um, enlighten you on some events and some things that's been happening and going on that the body of Christ must be aware of. Every church at this time must have some information that is relative to the end of time that is putting together and taking place around us that we must be aware of what is going on. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation 13. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Revelation 13. We're going to pick up something here. You know, you know over the days we've been just talking about Jesus and that he he has redeemed us. That's it. Case closed. Amen. It's, uh, stop sinning. Turn to the Lord Jesus. That's it. Case closed. You have been redeemed. The price has been paid. Amen. And we have gone and we have extracted quite a few scriptures to validate the point that we are making. Men have made a lot of business out of God business. Making all kind of deliverance. This and all kind of. He is the deliverer. That's it. We don't need you deliverance. He is the deliverer. Repent. <laughs> See, you know what I mean? It's a simple thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the message of Jesus have been one message. There's no deliverance here that day. All on the, the auspices of Jesus. One man. Hallelujah. Amen. One man given the body. We have just read it in Ephesians 4. The body of Christ consists of Jesus being the head of the church of Jesus Christ. And he has provided all the gift in that adhere to the one body. Amen. Hallelujah. So we don't need no all this and all this, all this, whatever. Amen. Don't don't feel no way, but that's just what it is. Amen. Jesus Christ want man to know the problem is sin. Hallelujah. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the Revelation 13. Revelation 13. We're going to look at something here as I will try to just share with you some 
things are taking place on the ground and God is so amazing because you know quite a, a couple of weeks ago we've been talking about Freemasonry and a lot of the you know you know so called men of God are in disorders and stuff like that well it's something that is orchestrated and going on it's a whole bigger plan behind the thing and that's what we've been saying many people don't have no clue what they're dealing with they think it's innocent oh just have a group you know yeah that's what you think it's not bigger than that my brother that's why we're told to be led of the God the spirit of God hallelujah make no vow glory to God amen hallelujah amen revelation 13 turn with me for revelation 13 if you're there with me let's look at this here and see if we could make sense of this as we're going to show you some natural things in the normal everyday life that will adhere to that scripture because the thing about the bible we always tell you that the bible is not some you know you know some kind of thing you just read and have nothing to do with the world the bible speaks of the world very clear amen hallelujah revelation 13 if you have your bible let's do this hallelujah glory to god and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his head the name of blasphemy hallelujah glory to god and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power amen hallelujah so the dragon gave him his power and his seed mm -hmm. and great authority amen and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world hallelujah if any man have an heir let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saint and he and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he speak as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire cometh down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he caused all both great small and great rich and poor free and born to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that un had understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six amen six 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 
Hallelujah. So that's in, that's in Revelation 13. So we bless the Lord this morning and we thank God for Jesus. And um, it's so much is going on um, out there in the world. Uh, yeah, in the world of churches and everything like that. And, you know, um, those information, we should be getting them from within the walls of the church. Every church should be really and truly up to speed with what's happening in the world that is relevant to the growth and development and structuring of the body of Christ and the body of believers. That is the intention of the, the body of Christ. I gave some this, I gave some that. I give some that and of course we know that many people in every church have different inclination and different giftings and but they won't get a chance to practice it because it's either my way or the highway I'm the man who run here who she's the man or whatever it is and such such folly hallelujah <laughs> amen <laughs> glory to God but God has designed the system like that that the body of Christ will be equipped hallelujah and be aware of what's happening around us hallelujah amen so Recently, they had a, a conference called the Kairos. Kairos, K-I-R-O-S. Maybe the pronunciation that might not be right, but it's a Kairos, and that was October 24th and 26th. Amen. It's a and it, it was called that conference was called so the world will know him, so the world will know him, and that was something involving the Vatican, the Catholic Church and the protestant movement and stuff like that with Kenneth Copeland and some different well they call themselves hierarchy you know the men of God uh, you know they represent all the other different denominations or subgroups out there and they had this conference and this conference was saying that they are gonna join they're gonna join with, with you know like there's no more protestant movement the, nobody's protesting against the Catholic Church for their way of salvation and saying that the Bible said this you understand so they've had this conference and it climax where they have a signing session where all the different faiths of the world came in Muslim everybody and signed some declaration saying that we are all gonna go back to Papa amen the, before that they had one with them um, this guy called Tony Palmer Tony Palmer was a charismatic um, Anglican priest I think from England and the Pope used him as a charismatic man he yeah, you know talking to everybody yeah, everybody's cool you know and they get him to compile a few of this um so-called men of God and they made an accord and uh, you know the Pope made a video and the video spoke of Joseph like he was Joseph and all his brothers are out there and he want his brothers to come back to Papa Amen. And I understand. So everybody gonna come back to Papa. That we don't have, you know, we don't have no need for all this different denomination. We just come under one head, Papa. I'm here. So he talk about um, John, um, about um, Joseph. You know, the coat of many colors, and you know, he saved his brother. They want bread, and they came back to him, and he gave them bread. So all those things are very, very significant to the body of Christ to know of all the things that are going on that we can be ready for what God is talking about that will happen in the last days hallelujah so I'm gonna play some music try to see if I could get this thing printed and I'm gonna just read what has happened over the while to give you an update so to speak those of you are that is conducive to that and have an open heart and an open mind hallelujah to what is transpiring in the earth in the physical hallelujah amen so we bless God this morning for you it's called Arise and Choice Radio God bless you this this morning we're going to try to get this thing together for you this morning hallelujah amen god bless you amen 15 minutes past the other side of seven is called arise good morning hope you're in a good mood this morning hallelujah we gotta work it out hallelujah god bless you
tell me Didn't, didn't he work it? 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 Put your hands together Put your hands together We went across the sea Passed and the quiet and deep Went to give God the praise Singing him every day But when I got back home When I got back home When I got back home A sign was on my door Great big red letter Big gold red letter Big gold red letter Stand for closure Stand for closure I say Lord you know Got nowhere to go Lord, Lord, you know, I know where to go. Lord, 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 you know, I know where to go. Lord, 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 you know, I know where to go. Lost everything I had, lost everything I had. Some of my friends is glad, but I kept on singing, and I kept on coming. I kept on singing. Work it out, we gotta work it out indeed. Definitely trying to work it out for you. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless God for Jesus this morning. 347-663-863. We can open the phone line just now, but keep it right, Jen Choice Radio. God bless you. Amen. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Amen. 21 minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. If you're on the job, good morning to you. Let's bless God this morning, alright? Encourage yourself this morning, brethren.
and the cross to see. Pass and the cross to me. Went to give God the praise. Singing him every day. But when I got back home, when I got back home, when I got back home, the sky was on my door. Great big red letter. Big gold red letter. Big gold red letter. Stand for closure. Stand for closure. It's amazing hearing people testimony, you know what I mean? Just give us more fire that Jesus Christ is Lord, you understand? Work it out, young lady. God bless you this morning. 27 minutes past the other side of the eight indeed. Uh, you know, I uh, bless God for, for my life and I thank God for you all day. And all those who, you know, understand what's happening and can relate to what we're talking about on Choice Radio, what this ministry is doing, and we bless God for you. And, you know, first of all, we want to let you understand. Sometimes you hear something on the radio and it's some kind of like you just like everything paint with a big brush, you know, and you really don't get to understand what we're really saying. Now, when we talk about Catholic and we talk about the Vatican, we talk, we're not talking about the people who love God under those auspices. We are talking about the foundation, you know, the, the people that are dealing with it. That's really what is what's going on. That's what's important. Amen. That what we are individual people. So we're not talking against, you know, like, okay, you're a Catholic. So, no, we're not talking against you. We're not talking, we're just talking about what's happening within the walls of the different things. So it's not nothing to do with, with an individual. You know, amen. So we're not, nobody is against nobody. We all are in Christ Jesus. We love the Lord and we are seeking the narrow way, the straight way with Christ Jesus. And what we're hoping that we keep on open mind that this is bigger than you and I and we are just individuals passing through pilgrims and thus we are told to work out our own salvation amen and because we have these promises of God we have to work it out find ourselves amen amen because uh, you, you know it's bigger than you and I so it's not an individual thing it's a thing of a thing of the Bible the word of God amen so many of us I've come through from different angles and come in, enter in at different ways and came into the knowledge of God from different perspective. We came to God under this, under that, under that. But we work it out. That's really what we, you know, playing this song, work it out. We got to work it out. The Bible says we to work out our salvation with fear and trembling of the Lord. Amen. He has told us to follow the Holy Ghost, follow the Holy Spirit. So whatever he's doing, we have to say, Jesus, you the one leading us. Because everyone is called. But they'll be chosen based on what they choose to follow what they choose to adhere to hallelujah so we bless the lord this morning so i couldn't get this thing printed out right now and um but um i was not really looking to talk about this or you know talk about this now although we know it's happening we you know we know things that's going on but i'm um, definitely i feel led to talk about that this morning to just show you that how everything is summing up so first of all we've been talking about the different groups that people join in they're in christ but they, that's not good enough for them they want to join something else they want to be a part of something else but all these things is orchestrated to get men to come under a head that when the time come and when what is said is said if you don't go along with the plan you will be eliminated don't care what you think. I know many men say, oh, well, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you could say what you want. After this thing is gone through, whoever is under those auspices, where they are in a leadership position, they will have to bring their whole flock in under that. Then you have church, church membership. Once you are on a membership, you have an obligation to that, to go along with the head of that. So all those things have been orchestrated from a long, long time. That's why they call organized religion. It's organized. It's not what you think it is. There are people behind the scenes working this thing for generation to see it come to fruition. And not just that, some of them are doing it ignorantly, but they are doing it to fulfill God's plans. You understand? Hallelujah. So they are doing it. They are involved in all this thing. And based on, you know, the Bible said, the word of God says that 
the word of God knows the intent of the heart of a man. You understand? When you read the Bible, God knows exactly what you want to do. That's why men can use the Bible for evil and use it for good. The word of God knows the intention of your heart. If you read in the Bible to do somebody evil, he's going to work for you. He's going to give you some sort of satisfaction because he knows the intent of your heart. So important. So those who have come to Jesus to serve the Lord Jesus, he knows the intent of your heart. He knows when you want to use it for the glory and honor of God. He knows that, that the word of God knows it. So important about the scriptures, the word of God is, oh my God, hallelujah. So we bless God. So let me read this for you. So this has been in, in operation for a while. Now, for many people who don't understand, the Protestant movement, just uh, 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 that might not all be all the details about it, but the Protestant Reformation and stuff like that came about in the sense that what the, the, the Catholic Church was really doing as for salvation, it was not biblical. It's still not biblical. People being sprinkled as a child. No, you must repent and be born again. That's it. You don't just join something, say you're born and put some water over your head. That's not Bible. That's not biblical. So the Protestant movement arose from those different things that are parties going on within that circle that claim to be Christianity or claim to be biblical Christianity by Jesus Christ. So we had this reformation and we had this different group of people who protested against the Catholic way of doing things. So now we have the different um, charismatic movements and Pentecostal and Lutheran and different. I mean what different branches came from that. So it came from that protesting and people made different groups from it. However, according to Revelation we read in 13 that that wound that was received to the Catholic Church because that was the main you know the main thing besides the Judaism and stuff like that that was the main thing and when the Church of Jesus Christ came out and they were going along with the doctrine of Jesus baptism and stuff like that then Rome rebelled against that that's the priesthood and we saw that even from the book of Acts we saw the Bible said that those that gladly believe Amen. They repented and received the Holy Ghost and they followed the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, right? That's from Acts 2.38. So those who didn't gladly believe, they continue in the priesthood. Hallelujah. And then we saw when they went into the temple and they healed the, the, the man and they did all the different things, then they start putting them, getting arresting them and doing all this stuff. So all this thing progressed after they were persecuting those that were called the way, that those are following the way of Jesus. So that thing went far where many people were killed, burned alive and all this stuff for maintaining and upholding the gospel of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that happened over a period of time and then, you know, so many years have passed. I think it's 500 years now since that time and, and stuff like that. And all those things are significant with the 500 and um, there were a lot of different things and 750. A lot of different things, you know, biblically uh, and figuratively uh, putting themselves together, numerological, uh, uh, putting themselves together. God is doing a lot of things are happening. Hallelujah. And those are paying attention will able to calculate and look at all these different things that is taking place place so now what um, the Catholic Church is doing is trying to bring back everybody on the one head which is the Pope that means you could still practice what you're practicing and think that you are by yourself but your head is really the Pope hallelujah that's what they're working on that's the general agenda so let's just look at this here I'm gonna read this here from um, um, January January the 14th 2014. Amen. That's a charismatic pastor from England I told you about. Well, not a pastor, a priest, Anglican priest. Uh, wow, this might be difficult, but I'm going to try to still read it, give you a little thing of it. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right. Okay. So he's really from South Africa. All right. Okay. On January the 14, 2014, Tony Palmer a charismatic bishop from a little known Anglican communion used his iPhone to shoot a video of a friend, Pope Francis, leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. In the video, Francis opened his heart to a group of Pentecostal leaders affiliated with Kenneth Copeland Ministry. I am speaking to you as a brother, Francis told them. Let us allow our yearning to grow because that will allow us to find each other, to embrace one another and together to worship Jesus Christ as the only Lord of history. He added, the miracle of unity has begun. 
This is the story of that miracle. It threads cut through the spiritual divides that separate mainline Protestant Catholics Pentecostals. But in, in tracing them, the main protagonist Pro, 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 protagonist, protagonist is the all right. They say the protagonist is the Holy God, Holy Spirit. Okay, which means that anything should could happen. Amen. Anything could happen. The week after recording the video, Bishop Palmer traveled to Texas to introduce Francis' greetings to the Pentecostals. He was uniquely positioned to do so. Palmer had given his life to Jesus in the Pentecostal church in South Africa. He was married to an Italian Catholic. Hold on. Okay, he was married to... All right. Hallelujah. Sorry about that, brethren. I'm just reading this from the computer, so I have to kind of scroll and stuff like that. And it's not that... Um, here. Okay, so bless God this morning. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So this is the okay. Okay, so we okay. So the week after recording the video, he traveled. Okay, hold on. The, the page is kind of like not too thing. Thank you so much. Have the patience. So don't worry. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So the week after recording the video, Palmer traveled to Texas to introduce Francis' greetings to the Pentecostals. He was uniquely positioned to do so. Palmer had given his life to Jesus in the Pentecostal church in South Africa. He was married to an Italian Catholic. He had become an Anglican priest and bishop. And he had adopted a Catholic cardinal from Buenos Aires named George Mario Bogolio, Bogolio, Bogolio. Later Pope Francis, as one of his spiritual fathers, in a fiery speech that set the stage, Palmer read from the 1999 Lutheran Catholic Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification. In that document, the two confessions declared that they share a common understanding of the basis of salvation and therefore that the central theological disagreement of the Reformation had been resolved. As Palmer put it, the protest is over. Methodists had joined Lutherans and Catholics in signing the declaration in 2006, yet millions of Christians had never heard of the declaration and so were living their lives as if the protest was still in force. But Palmer didn't dwell on the past. He had come to the conference to play the role of John the Baptist, of a prophet bur burning to announce something greater that was yet to come. Give me a moment, let me scroll it up. We are living in an incredibly important generation, he, he declared. After watching the Pope's greeting on a giant screen, the Pentecostal leaders rose to their feet. They prayed for Francis enthusiastically. With their hands raised in tongues in the spirit, by dear Sir Kenneth Copeland said, Thank you so, thank you so from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, sir. I think they wanted to say, sir, because I heard the speech. Thank you, sir, from the bottom of our hearts. Francis' greetings was not supposed to become public. But the month after the conference in Texas, someone posted a video from the conference on YouTube. I, it went wild. Palmer's wife, Emiliana, told me Palmer was bombarded with emails from evang evangelicals and Pentecostals who wanted to be part of the Unity Miracle. <laughs> Emilica called Francis, wondering what to do. He told her to let it go. The wind of the Spirit was blowing. And in June 2014, the video led to a meeting in Rome that included Palmer, Francis, Copeland, and another TV preacher, James Robinson. All told the leaders 
at the meeting represented more than 1.8 billion Christians, including the Pentecostal movement, the fastest growing segment of church. The meeting inclu included a two-hour lunch with prayer, hugs, laughter, and even a high five from Robinson to the Pope. Francis, as Robinson put it, spoke fervently on the need for everyone, Protestant, Catholic, whatever, to have a personal encounter with Christ. Lift, lit up by the message, Robinson said, Sir, as an, evan is a, as an evangelist, that deserves a high five. Because the video of Palmer, Palmer's introduction had shot around the world alongside Francis' greeting. Palmer's light was shining out perhaps more brightly than it ever had. Then just as quickly it went out. On July 20, 2014, a car struck the motorcycle Palmer was riding near his home in England. He was in surgery for 10 hours before he died. A 48-year-old man who left behind his wife, Emiliana, and the two young adult children, not to mention many shocked Christians. Palmer was born in England and moved to South Africa when he was 10. He met Emilia there. Some came from a wealthy, she came from, sorry, she came from a wealthy Italian family who had traveled the world before settling in South Africa. Though neither was a practicing Christian, during their engagement, they attended a conference at a Christian family church in Johannesburg. The pastor gave an altar call, and Tony and Emiliana went up and dedicated their lives to Jesus. Later that afternoon, they went to a party in a wealthy neighborhood. Tony was offered drugs, which he had taken in the past, but something had changed, Emiliana recalls. He looked at me and said, Emmy, I don't belong here anymore. They left together. After getting married, Tony and Emiliana quit their jobs so they could go full-time as door-to-door -door evangelists. They hit the streets for eight or nine hours a day, watching VHS tapes on Kenneth Copeland preaching for inspiration before they went out. According to a video on Copeland's website, the Palmer led 167 families to, to Christ during that time. During the 1990s, the Palmer came in contact with the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church, as Tony put it later. When my wife found out that she could be charismatic, evangelical, Pentecostal, and Catholic, she wanted to reconnect to her Catholic roots. Their children were raised Catholic, but Tony remained an evangelical. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hold on. Give me a minute. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. All right. Tony, you remain an evangelical. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. All right. Let's continue here. In 2003, Tony got an email from Matteo Calesi, a leader of the Catholic Charismatic Renew Renewal in Italy, inviting the Palmers to move to Italy to minister within the Italian Catholic Charismatic Renewal. But the invitation was conditional. On the Palmers raising their own financial support, just one couple agreed to back them financially. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, the Palmers sold the car and house and used the money to support their new work. While in Italy, Tony joined the communion of evangelical Episcopal churches, CEC, a young Ang Anglican group with its base in Florida that had grown from a circle of charismatic evangelicals who had felt a hunger 
for the sacraments. With the CEEC, -E Tony became an Anglican priest and later a bishop. The CEEC -E is a communion that is independent of the Anglican communion led by the Archbishops of Canterbury, but claims historic apostolic succession for its bishop. The story of how Palmer came to be friends with Bergoglio begins in 2003. That year, Khaleesi, Palmer's co-worker, helped start an ecumenical group in Argentina. The group brought evangelical, uh, evangelicals and Catholic leaders together for fellowship and prayer and sponsored an annual charismatic rally which Bogulio began attending in 2004. For the first year, first two years, sorry, he went as a spectator, but something changed in 2006. What happened is related in Austin Avering biography, The Great Reformer. The Cardinal spent the morning, as usual, seated along with everyone else, but in the afternoon he came to give a speech to the 5,000 Christians gathered there. He asked the preachers first to pray for him and knelt with his head bowed as they, head the, as they, as they held their hands sorry, over him. Avering writes, the pastor leading the prayer, Noberto Sarocco, ended with um, crescendo of invocation. Fill him with your holy, fill me with your Holy Spirit and power, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ivoring described how Bogilio then preached with new fever, with passion, urgency, clarity and strength. After the conference, the Cardinal started praying regularly with a group of evangelical pastors. Later, by he arranged for some of them to preach at retreats for the Catholic priests of Buenos Aires Archdiocese, aimed at helping them have a personal relationship with Jesus. Also in 2006, Palmer Khaleesi and few others went to visit Bogolio in connection with their ecumenical work. He asked to hear their stories. Palmer explained how his family attended Catholic Mass together with, but he could not receive communion, a fact that had perplexed the Palmer's children. When he finished, Father Mario just wept. Emiliana told me, the Palmers usually spoke affectionately of Bogilio, calling him simply Father Mario. Bogilio asked Palmer if they could keep in touch with, with phone calls, emails, and occasional face-to-face -face meetings. Their friendship grew. During one of their conversations, Palmer spoke to Bogilio about whether he should become Catholic. He described the cardinal's response, response to Ivoring. Bogilio told me that we need to have bridge builders. He, con he counseled me not to take the step because it looked like I was choosing a side and I would cease to be a bridge builder. When Bogilio was elected as Pope Francis when, oh, when Bogolio was elected as Pope Francis, oh, so that's Pope Francis there all along, all right. Palmer expected that the friendship would be permanently changed. So he was surprised when after Christmas of 2013, Francis called him at his home and asked when he could come to Rome for a visit. During that meeting, Palmer told Francis, about the Copeland Conference 
asking if Francis would like to send a message. Why don't you make a video, Francis said after a pause. Then he gave the greeting that went viral on YouTube. Palmer's funeral was held in Bath, England. A Catholic Requiem Mass at with Bruno Irilio, a Pentecostal from Toronto and an ecumenical leader who knew Palmer sat near the altar along with the priests and bishops. Emiliana tearfully read a message from Pope Francis. We were great friends. Those to us who love him feel imply impel sorry by his zeal to follow in his footsteps, to walk without rest, preparing the bride. One single bride for the bridegroom who will come. In October, Francis met with Emiliana and the contingent of bishop from the CEEC. He announced that Emiliana, the Archbishop and Archbishop sorry, Robert Wise, had agreed to carry the torch. This dream, which was Tony's, this dream of being able to walk in communion. It is too early to tell what will come next in this work that the Holy Spirit brought about through Tony and Francis. The wound of the, the, sorry, the wound of Tony's death is still raw. And from the moment Tony took out his iPhone, no one was following a script. One possibility stems from a draft document that Palmer, Copeland and Robinson brought to Francis in June 2014. Averang spoke to Palmer just after the meeting. Palmer told me the draft deliberates deliberations, sorry, the draft deliberations had three elements. The Nicene Constantinople Creed, which Catholics and Evangelicals share, the core of the Catholic Lutheran Declaration of 1999, making clear there is no disagreement over justification by faith, as well as final section asserting that Catholics and Evangelicals are now united in mission because we are declaring the same gospel. Hallelujah. Palmer's hope was that Pentecostals and Catholic leaders would sign the document sometime in 2017. During the 500th anniversary, I told you that, 500. Okay, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation and the 50th anniversary of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Hallelujah, 50th, Pentecost, amen? Hallelujah, so all this thing is strategic. I'm convinced that this is a highly significant historical moment. Avering told me, we will look back and say, this was the moment where Catholics and Evangelicals came together. The key, says Alvarez, is not simply Francis' opening, openness to building friendships across denomination, denominations, but the fact that Francis is charismatic. All Catholic charismatic should now be saying that this is a charismatic Pope. He is. And that's why Copeland and Robinson and these others are responding to Francis. They're saying, look, this guy is a man of the Spirit. He is a Spirit-filled Pope responding to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and discerning that this is the moment. The Kairos and that he, he must do what he can to bring this about. Amen. I think Kairos means gathering or something like that. This miracle of the unity began with something small, a private video message that become public. It fueled a coming together of Tony's evangelical and Pentecostal friends with his Catholic friends, Francis, while sweeping in hundreds of thousands of others through a, a 21st century spiritual agent. 
YouTube. Amen. For it to grow larger still requires something even more profound. The fulfillment by the Spirit of an ancient spiritual promise. Unless a grain falls onto the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That was um, from Sean Connolly, a communicating director of the People of Praise, a communal Christian community based in South, South, um, South Bend, Indiana. All right, so let's see if we have anything more on this. All right, so that's basically um, what we wanted to just share here now. Of course, there is more towards that, towards what we're talking about, um, the meeting that they had, and then they had... Um, all the people going over to sign this one accord so they had every denomination in the world gather together and sign a declaration saying that we all are one people are all one people in God amen hallelujah we bless the name of the Lord Jesus so four more minutes before the hour of nine o'clock radio on, on choice radio God bless you if, if you have any comment to share this morning we open the phone line for you we bless the name of the Lord Jesus as we thank him for his grace his love and his mercy here this morning on choice radio three four seven six six three eight six three eight God bless everyone New horizon, new mercies provided for me. I have decided the enemy won't win today. A brand new horizon, there's a new mercy. I have decided. The enemy, the enemy won't win today Cause God will fight for me Totally humiliate my enemy The phone is open He will take what was broken Anything to share this morning, we bless God for you, amen, hallelujah Give me the faith In the meantime, I want you to get your hearts right, get your heart ready Amen, for as things unfold according to the word of God Let's be ready for what's happening in the world, all right? Oh, you must have a new mind and new heart. I have not forgotten His breath is the treasure in me Oh, created with purpose My focus is on 347-663-8638 if there's a comment, we definitely welcome it this morning. Bless God. Caller, good morning. God bless you. Good morning, and sister. God bless you too. God bless you. Uh, thank you, you know, for, um, for giving us insight in in in, in these situations we're taking place. You know, my view on it is that um, is 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 a strategy introducing the one world order or the one world government. And I believe they need the church, whether it's a fallen part of the church or, but they need the church to, to strategically bring this into, into full, into full, um, into full gear, you know? And, 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 and this is where the, um, the, the spirit of, of, of lawlessness who is disguised as the spirit of light is introducing himself and is taking his, his position you know in, in the form of the world 
You know, and these are just different avenues of of um of of, of presenting them in. You know, mm-hmm. that, that is my that, that is that is my view, because you see, it's, it's a lot of craftiness. They're not being open about the agenda, but this is the the agenda they have. You understand? It, it's principalities, it's powers, it's rulers of darkness. And and they manifesting themselves very craftily into the into the society in an open way. In a light, no, there's nothing in the background. They are coming out out on the forum on an open forum. So there's my thought about it. You know, I'm not thought, I'm not correct. I, I I need to I need um you know I can need a guidance and and insight just as everybody else I believe you know. But this is my view. What I believe is is taking place. You know. With, with with the with bringing the church, trying to bring the church under one umbrella, without without um confession, without repentance, without declaration saying well, Jesus Christ is Lord and and He is who we listen up, you know. Mm-hmm. So that is that is my um contribution to your messages to, your, to um what we talk what we're speaking about here this morning. Definitely bless so the Lord. Thank you again, Mr. Church, and I bless you, and I thank you for your station, and we pray for you all. Hallelujah. Continually. Bless the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for the call. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for listening, everybody. And as we were saying before, according to the Word of God in Ephesians 4, that is what God is saying. The church should be equipped and know exactly what's happening. That everybody should have an idea what's taking place when we see the tr- what's transpiring. According to the book of Revelation 13, we should know what's happening and see it in the natural realm. We see it in our everyday life so we know. So the body of Christ is ready for what's coming. Amen. And we see that in the word of God we have read before. Those who name are written in the book. You see, that's those who have not taken the mark of the beast. And what might happen, I mean, you never know how things are going to work out. That the number of the name and the image of the beast. As it was, so now you fall under an auspices of a group, a charismatic group that is affiliated with all these people. And your name go in that you're already affiliated and is a member of that organization. You can't get out of it. You are bought into it from a, you know, from, you know, lack of knowledge. You just join in and you are already in. If you refuse to take the mark or to sign up with that image, then you will face persecution. So those things have to happen. And that's a manifestation of what the Word of God is talking about. It's looking Revelation, a beast coming out and that beast. And, and many people didn't know that, that um, the day um, Pope Francis came into office, lightning struck the, the, the basilica. Amen. Lightning straight from heaven. And lightning came right down on heaven as they announced him and the smoke went up in the air. A lightning came from heaven and strike the basilica. Amen. <laughs> yeah. God is just so in everything signs to make everybody know those are paying attention. So those things are very significant. Amen. And and for if you listen to the program and you 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 Catholic or whatever, this is not talking about you. It's not an individual thing. If you listen to the program, we t- you might think, well, oh, we're talking against. No, we're talking about the foundation of those that are behind. Yes, when you talk about Jesus, you think they're talking about Jesus, so you join up. And, but we're not talking about individual. There are many people in the Catholics, they love the Lord, they love Jesus. I met many people from Catholics and different groups that love the Lord Jesus. They love God. Amen? So we have nothing, it's not nothing against. But God wants His children to come out from her, come out from among that contrary way. Hallelujah. Come out from that head and let Jesus be the head of your life and stuff like that. So we need, we need to understand that. Every, God is calling everybody to himself, to Jesus. Not through religious lens, but through the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 347-663-8638. Hallelujah. So we're looking to join our sister. Amen. Uh, John 8.32. The truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. We're hoping that she's able to join us this morning and, and share with us. I don't know what she's been talking about this morning. But we the phone is open. If you have a comment to share, 347-663-8638. And like we were saying before, as God continues to unfold the word of God in real life and we see the different things, the church should be the church should be well informed as to what is taking place, that we gird the loins of our mind. We are ready so we don't be taken, you know, abruptly and not even know when you're taken. You have to know what's happening and be ready. Amen. Because the Bible speaks about what will come on the earth 
if your heart is not strong, your heart will, man heart will fail them. For what will come on the earth, you say, yeah, man heart will fail them. When you see what will come up on the earth, you don't see nothing yet. So God is saying we should be ready, we should be sober, we should be vigilant, we should be knowing what's happening, that we're not just like lame ducks, slipping duck, waiting for what to happen. We should know what's going on. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. 347-663-8638. Just talk about Jesus. Why are you talking? <laughs> yeah, that's about Jesus. Jesus is the one who gives us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The body of Christ is one unit. Everything is there for the edification of the body of Christ. Everything is relevant to the Christian's life and the Christian's endurance and the Christian's sustenance. Amen. Everything is relevant to us. 347-663-8638. If you're out there, you have a comment this morning. We bless God for you this morning. If you're out there in Radio Land, hallelujah. We bless God for you this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, caller, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, turn off your radio, sir. Hello, Pastor. So good morning, man of God. God bless you. Yeah, you see, I've um, I called one time, you know, you know, I was the same person who was calling back. You know what I'm saying? Amen. God bless um, you. Um, yeah, I always listen to the program. You know what I'm saying? See, let me tell you one thing, brother. You know, let me tell you something. You see, uh, people are so carnally minded now that you know, even some people does not even believe till till now, don't believe in the existence of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this, the carnal mind is so much polluted by the devil because he knows the glory, you know, the the kingdom that God Almighty have, you know, have prepared for his children. So he, he wants people, you know, he's going to take along with himself to hell. You know, because remember, okay, God said for the transgression of the devil, you know, for deceiving his people, the, the, the hell is the bottomless pit, is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the fire of eternity, torment, that never stop, never end, you know, like maybe in 10 years time, maybe this will get easier, get, no, I've seen people who testify, you know, of the pit of hell, God showed it to them in revelation, God showed it to them in vision, you know, different prophets, different people who still, you see, I see that people perish because of lack of knowledge. People don't want to accept the truth. I feel it, brethren. I won't lie. I feel it. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel His coming. I feel His rapture. Let me tell you something. I went to a, a Catholic school all the days of my life. Like when I was a little child, I never accepted the doctrine of the Catholic. Because let me tell you something. It, 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 I see it more of the devil. I don't. I don't know. Right from childhood. I have friends who are Catholic, I have families who are Catholic. I never been to Catholic. Even times I've been there, I'm not comfortable, you know, I'm not comfortable with the congregation, with the doctrine, you know, I don't know. So, um, the thing is, at this point in time, brother, see, I uh, thank God for the good work, you know. At this point in time, we have to know that uh, the time is near, all the Bible prophecies, is, uh, is already, you know, in place. We don't have time. We don't have time. The hope now is very short. I can feel, see, I can feel the presence of the Lord everywhere. People don't want to know this. They love false prophets. See, I don't believe in, I don't believe in the God, I don't believe in somebody or oh, want to preach the word of God or something. What I believe, I believe there is a supernatural being who created the heavens and the earth, who through him, the world exists. Without him, no world, no life, nothing in existing. You know? Even the science is foolish to the spiritual. Without the spirit, no scientist, no science, nothing. But people don't want to believe it because human technology has grown in our minds. <laughs> in the sense that these are evil forces. These are, these are forces of the devil. I can feel it. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are saying, brother, everything I note it note by note, everything is right. Let me tell you something. Before those days, eh, I used to be a very shy person. When I want to say, you know, like, preach the word of God to people, I become shy. But this point, God took away the spirit of shame because he doesn't want our soul to perish. People have to know the truth. 
The truth is bitter, but we have to react, especially at this point. You know, the world is not getting better. The Bible prophecies are coming to a reality. We have to know it. The church, the Vatican is of the devil. I've never... See, let me tell you something. I don't put... I'm, I'm not afraid of nothing because as far as I have God, I'm the image of God. You know, I'm not afraid of anything that will kill the flesh, but I cannot kill the spirit. That's the only thing I'm afraid. Anything that will kill the spirit, that's what I'm afraid, afraid of. But if you cannot kill my spirit, you only kill my flesh, that's of the devil. The flesh is of the devil. Anything that has to do with flesh, materiality, karma is of the devil. These are devices with which the devil wants to, you know, win us to his kingdom. You have to know that parents is against children, mothers against children, wife against their husband. Things are happening. All these things are things that God has already prophesied. He showed it to, 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 to most of our, the, 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 the past prophets. God is not going to call, he's not going to beg you, he loves us, you know. <laughs> he's trying to use every means. That's why they say there will be increase in technology. So it's saying, it's saying, when increase in technology, it means that to be able to share the information. That's why you give room to technology, to share information, to reach out to the last people. Hallelujah. All right, brethren. God you know, bless I you. Want to share yes, it, yes, know, yes. Of my experience. Hallelujah. Of course. So the world can know that Jesus is Lord and is the true Lord. Amen. Nothing can change it. Yes, and let me say this to you, my brother. What is so important for us to know? We have to know that we know we that God to, is God. Otherwise, yeah. that devil will tell you you talking stuff, yeah. whatever. You have to know. <laughs> And once you agree to go with Jesus, he give you more information, he give you more right. strength, he give right. you more courage. You have to agree with that he is Lord and he will give you more revelation. So it's so important right. that you agree. You don't have to be double-minded. If God right. is God, God is God. What is evil is evil. What is clean evil. is clean. What is good is good. We have no time to play with that devil. So once we oh. are to declare God, we have to know that's where the strength comes from. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Yeah. Bless the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's why the Bible said, you know, God gave some pastors, right? And then God said he will give his, you know, pastors to the people that to feed his children, to hear what they're supposed to hear. You understand? That's so important that people are filled with God's spirit when they get behind a pulpit. You cannot come from a school and talking about, no, that's not this thing here. That's what you have in those kind of churches. You go to learn about this, you do the catechism and all this kind of stuff. But Jesus said he have to put his spirit in you first. You must be born of the water and of the spirit when you're born again now you come into that sometimes people feel well oh this song is boastful or this song like who you think you are no you gotta believe the bible if god said that's the way he does it that's the way he does it no other way hallelujah you must be filled with the spirit and then you are known by your fruit who you are as a young man was speaking there I, um i met people online and different things that have different controversy with Pentecostal church and different Protestant church and stuff like that and what they're saying is that we are sort of rebel in a way because the way how we worship and the way we think so what they like is that kind of fake holiness where they come into a place quiet and they do this and they have their walk around and they have their bell and they have their this and they walk through the aisle and they do this to the left and they do this to the right and everybody kneel down and we walk quiet and next day we go back to partying the night before we party and so they feel that now make more sense it look more godly you understand but the, the bible call it a form of godliness is a form of godliness according to second corinthians is a form of godliness that deny the power thereof the power of god is to change you to turn you over not to have you pretend a show every sunday or whatever day and you attend your mass or whatever and you you know you just well last night you was cheated with a woman you're not married you know i mean you have how many women womanizing but this morning you come to the priest oh brother oh i'm sorry foolishness and you pretend you go to god god is not interested in that that's a foolishness Hallelujah. But some people feel that make more sense. It look more respect to God. It look like you respect God. You walk quiet and uh, do, 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 do. you understand me? But you know, that's nothing to do with what God is saying now. God wants men to repent. Don't pretend. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't pretend. Come clean. Repent. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. 347-663-8638. At um, 9.30, our sister will join us. Amen. John 8.32 ministry. The truth shall set you free. I don't know what she'll be talking about today. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. But the phone is open for you if you're listening to the program this morning and you want to share with what he's talking about. What we was just trying to make you aware of is according to Revelation 13. Amen. Everybody hear about the mark of the beast and stuff like that. And one giving power to the other one and stuff like that. Amen. And we have a false prophet coming forward as a prophet as if he want unity and come in and tell us, well... There's no need for us to do that. Let's come together, create one church and stuff like that. And let's have one head. You understand me? Hallelujah. So all this is Bible. This is Bible and fulfillment of scripture. So when we see them coming to pass, we must be solid, grounded in God. Hallelujah. Amen. So and I was saying before, now many leaders, they, are, they like to join groups. Now you become a pastor and you must join another group of other pastors. So they come to your church, you go to their church and this kind of thing. And then they come on the head where you know, they have all these different things that they join. But they don't understand what they're joining. Because what they're joining in is something that is already from the bottom of it is connected to Rome. Hallelujah. Amen. All of this movement are joined to Rome. Hallelujah. All these different fraternity and college, they're joined to Rome. They, they're joined to one main head. Hallelujah. And many people didn't know. Many of these big telephone companies, they belong to Rome. They belong, yeah, they have somebody in the front of it. They belong to Rome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's a great, great, great power. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus this morning. So we bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 347-663-8638. And, and it's something so important for the body of Christ to understand. God wants us to have a mind and a heart that we are in a battle. We are in a war with that devil. Hallelujah. We, have, we, we, we cannot take this lightly. We have to take it serious. This is eternal life we are dealing with. So we must cultivate. God wants us to cultivate that mind, that heart issue. You see, that's why the gospel of Jesus that we talk about on Choice Radio sung trivial or sung different from the one that you know in your everyday Sunday church. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to bless you. No. God called you to be a soldier. This is about eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. We are called to make disciples of men. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who give the good news of the kingdom to come. Hallelujah. So sometimes you listen to this program and you upset. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. No, but we always tell you the Bible. We just read in the scriptures. We not, you know. Hallelujah. I, I just bless God for my life this morning. And every one of us who haven't had have the opportunity to inherit the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, let us be purpose in our heart. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord Jesus. As for me, my mind is made up that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is God. Hallelujah. And I will serve him. Let's take that caller again. Caller, good morning. Hello. Blessed good morning, my brother. Bless God. Brother. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bless you. Bless, bless you too. Ah, hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. I just want to weigh in a little in the conversation. Second Peter chapter two mm -hmm. and verse one. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. I, I just I joined I this morning and I heard only a little bit uh you were reading from a booklet or a book, I'm not sure what it was. Mm -hmm. And you were informing us about the ecumenical movement. I think uh where they are gathering all the churches together uh, Mm -hmm. And they are connecting with the Pope, and uh, they are standing up before a screen, yeah, uh, to to greet the Pope from mm -hmm. a video screen. Yeah, I think the Pope is so high he can't come to meet the people himself. He have to come on a screen. My gosh, what a Pope! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter two. I think I heard Paul say. I can't say First Peter. Am, uh, uh, no, Second Peter. Second Peter, yeah, I think, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, chapter oh, two. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. No problem. Oh, and yeah. verse one. And I was saying, I think Paul said, "I am better to the wise and to the unwise." And uh, I think he said to 
to, to the barbarian, to the Jews, anybody, he is available to come and meet them and give them the gospel face to face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Timo, second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets also among them, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to walk away in a little, my brother, what I learned that a lot of times people look at the Bible, they say the Old Testament is tough and it is and it is rough and it is harsh and deep and strong and when it comes to judgment and so forth, a lot of people say go to the Old Testament, a lot of preaching and judgment is there. But when it comes to the New Testament it's soft and dandy and candy and nice. But I beg to differ. Jesus preached more about hell than everybody else in the Old Testament. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus revealed to us that the world die not and the fire is never quenched. And he teach us so much about what destruction and darkness are away. And I think what a lot of people do, I don't know where they get this from. I don't understand where they get it from. They have this sugar coat on the New Testament. And it is so soft and cool and candy. And I think in a form the enemy uses that to deceive and give us this soft walk. If those who were under the Old Testament were righteous and holy, I must declare that those who are under the New Testament must be... I, I got to make up a word. Righteous <laughs> and holy. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> oh my Lord! My heart is broken. <laughs> what? We are so flimsy. For the new text, flimsy, my brother, like a cotton candy blown with the wind. A leaf, the Bible said, chaff. Uh, uh, the wicked are like the, the chaff which the wind drive it away. No, that should come under the New Testament. Because where, where is our emergency to the word that has spoken to us? We sit still and let never heresy. You know what? We think the devil is a guy that walk around with two horns in his head. Maybe that may be under the Old Testament. Under the New Testament, the devil walk with a Bible. The devil come as a wolf in sheep clothing. The Bible said, no, no marvel. For the ministers of Satan are transformed as the ministers of life. Hallelujah. Transform, that's the word. We are smarter and smarter than God and smarter than the New Testament. So everybody who says Jesus all day are for the Lord. Even in Jesus, when Jesus was preaching, demons get up and say, we know you are the Holy One. Oh, then we should baptize that demon because he just confessed Jesus as Lord. Jesus cast him out. But he confessed Jesus as Lord. But they telling Jesus to come out. So it is with a lot of people. They want to confess Jesus as Lord, but no holiness. Oh, you're preaching damnation. Then they must shut up Jesus. They must identify. But Jesus, the those who don't believe the Son is condemned already. I believe Jesus said that. Didn't you? Did you read that somewhere? I read that somewhere in the Bible. Mm -hmm. John. He, said those, he said, those who don't believe that the Son of Man is come, they are condemned already. Mm -hmm. Already, somebody say we condemning them. <laughs> uh, so here the Bible is saying they will bring down the heresies. Why, my brother? Because the devil will damn people. The devil don't come to play with people. People are playing and thinking that the devil, oh, he's a big red dragon. He's gonna appear one day and the beast is gonna come. No, no. Right now, the devil is set out to damn people. The devil will damn me, will damn you, will damn anybody. Oh, you, it, it is so bad that people don't even want to use the word damn anymore. It is a curse word. Huh? Hallelujah. It is a curse word. If you use the word damn, you may be damned. We're not talking about caught speaking in a form against somebody. We're talking about Bible, right? So 
they, they don't nobody want to use that word anymore i think the devil is behind that because we're not talking about talking uh, uh pervertedly no that's not what we're talking we're talking about the bible where the bible said you will be damned and and also paul said that they all might be damned who believe not the love of the truth yeah who believe not yeah. the love of the truth no no listen as you were saying that now um yesterday I was speaking to somebody online I, I, yes. made, I made some comment about the church that got shot up in texas right yes uh, about recently right the church got shot up in texas now now hear this now i was making a comment on on the page concerning the same church was celebrating halloween right My Lord. so the same guy who shot up the place he went there on the halloween time no oh no Lord. no look at this now what happened if you no know, last night i was just meditating on the lord and i think the lord just put that in my spirit because what people saying some you are being heartless if you're telling the people they should not be celebrating halloween now hear this what happened if that guy is troubled looking for the lord trying to find jesus go to that place and see the hypocrisy of these people who's supposed mm -hmm. to be light celebrating what he knows is darkness and mm -hmm. he get frustrated and come back and say i'm going to destroy this wicked people because mm -hmm. now today they come in worshiping god and a few days ago they were here celebrating the devil the last night the lord put that so strong in my spirit that this man know he have problems looking for some source of comfort go to a place that is called a church expecting to see something different that could bring him to light instead he see people who claim to know god celebrating the devil and decide you see me i will come and destroy this hypocrisy now we would never know the truth of it but last night i was waken up by the lord because mm -hmm. after we was having some back and forth with her, some lady text me and you know from some place whatever some pastor even text me too and saying that hey you know you are heartless so you know now people are grieving it's like all i was don't tell them that they're, they're wrong don't tell them that just go ahead and tell them oh well we're sorry for you da, 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 da. no nothing wrong with that we're not saying we are happy for what happened but we are saying the church should not be partaking in stuff because you open the door to the devil so of this course. and like i said in the, uh, probably three o'clock this morning or two o'clock the lord awakened me i was awakened to that revelation just like that that this young yes. man might have went there hoping to find consolation for his soul so he went in the midst of them he went there they said they saw him he went there among that gathering what they call it they didn't call it halloween they call it a fall festival in other words they changed the name of it yeah, to make it sound yes but they do the same exact thing and they are, if you go on their website you will see all the costume and the devils and all the different things that they celebrated all that they had right now it doesn't mean that what i'm saying is is at the total hundred percent you understand me but yes. the point is the bible tells us to avoid every appearance of evil every appearance of evil abstain from anything that look evil everything that yeah. look not of god ab avoid it they had one of the the, the the ladies in there she dressed like somebody in um in a emergency room with um with 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 the um the tag on her hand and a a a, a crack in her neck like like you know when oh. your, your hand is broken so she pretending mm. like she injured and all these different things that people playing with god with and they playing with principality so oh, the point i was on. making to you is the lord awoke me and gave me a revelation like that man that young man that you see there he didn't just go there on his own like that this man went there looking for life he went there before he came to shoot up the place he went there and he saw them participating in this wickedness you see people don't understand if this house is a house of prayer a man who come to a house of prayer should find prayer or find the yes. attributes of prayer there to give him a consolation to let him know he can go on he can find life in jesus if you come to a place that's supposed to have light and you see darkness this make you more dark because there's no more hope for you oh my gosh you, yes. you see what i'm saying there is no more hope if i come to a place where i should find hope and there is no hope what should i do next my lord and so this man he came there on the day when they were celebrating the thing yes he came there the day he came there during the week he know the people he come around oh. them so he came there and then he came back and just had to blow that place oh. up and it, i see in the newspaper that he came back in the, one of those costumes <laughs> well i'm just trying to tell you 
Lord. I'm just trying to tell you. This, this is, is what terrible. we're saying. Uh, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So I was going back and forth, changing some scriptures with some people who was texting me and just selling them scriptures. I, di- I don't want to hear talk. Let's talk scriptures. You yes. tell me this. Let me show and you Bible. Yeah, Why you're saying that, mm-hmm. brother? Remember, you see, brother, this is a day only righteousness can talk, you know. We who is in righteousness, the Bible said the righteous is as bold as a lion, but the wicked flee it when no man pursue it. When Hallelujah. the righteous is walking in righteousness, they are not afraid. They will tell it. Remember what Jesus said? He said, What do you think? You think those who fell here, yeah, look, the, yeah, uh, when he, when yeah, the uh-huh. also, yeah, fell on mm-hmm. them. Hallelujah. Everybody should be grieving, right? I send them that scripture too. Our Lord and Savior said, Do you think those who the power fell on, I think he said in Jerusalem, one of those cities, yes. he said, do you think there were more sinners above everybody else? Mm-hmm. But then he looked at his own disciples and said, unless you repent, mm-hmm. you shall all likewise perish. Hallelujah. That's Jesus, in the moment of the destruction where these people get some power fall on, they said, Herod, just like how this man take up and whatever, a rifle and kill all these people. He said the herald mingled the blood with some sacrifices of some people. And they tell it to Jesus. Jesus said, do you think there are more sinners than everybody mm-hmm. else? Jesus said, unless you repent, Look to you will perish. Then Jesus should say, oh, what a bad situation. No! He's showing that the devil is out to damn people. The devil is praying. He set up a whole system arrangement from media to government to school to name brand clothes to music everything is coming out of the pit of hell to make sure listen my brother you know what but the lord show me you can make mistakes in this life and you pay the consequences okay you are young you indulge you can catch disease you can have children early you can go to all kind of terror you get all, uh abuse beaten battered all kind of stuff because of your mistakes that you did in sin you can go to, and even after you get saved, you can still be feeling some of those pain and consequences. The Lord said hallelujah to that. But if you, my brother, and I, my brother, make a mistake to fall into hell, there's no correction. And that's not going to change. We are going to be there forever. We are bound forever. And so Jesus wanted us to say, listen, it don't matter if somebody killed you, it don't matter if you, listen, you make some mistake in another Christian, and you are facing consequences and pain for it. Praise the Lord. Nothing wrong. It, it's sad. The situation is sad. You know, and you face the pain for it. But hallelujah, jump and shout still. Because guess what? You are not in hell. Your, your situation might just last for 50 years. And if you live for 150, that's 150. But you see those who go to hell. The situation don't last for 150 million years. It is forever. It is eternal. They are lost. They have no escape. They, they are jammed. The Bible said they are lost and 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 there's no change. They can't repent. And so when we look at situation, we realize that the devil is not playing. What he is after is our soul. If we fall and die in sin, it's done for. We Amen. are done. And there's no change. And so in this life, we can shout it no matter what problem, issue, circumstance, mountain, last, eating out of garbage can. It don't matter, my brother. Rejected by the world. Hallelujah. Death, no matter. But this is just, you can't, people don't even live to 150 years. But if you live 150 years of trouble, whatever. But if you ever fall into hell, or I fall into hell, my brother, we are lost. Hallelujah. And look what the Bible said here. Second. Second Thessalonians Hallelujah. chapter 2, it said, and verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion mm-hmm. that they should believe a lie, uh, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, Hallelujah. but had pleasure, pleasure in, in unrighteousness. unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Now, my brother, you see what is going on. People are, are, are loving lies. And they think, it is, they think it is not so bad, you know, because we are under grace. But they don't know what they are doing. They don't know the damnation they are calling and the destruction that they are calling. They don't know the terror mm-hmm. that they are dealing with. And the Bible says when people don't love the truth, when they want to play around with life, when they want to mm-hmm. play around with heaven, yep. when they want to play around with the world, if the 
Bible says God will send them strong delusions uh-huh. and they might all be damned they are lost because they determine they don't want to follow God. You can't mix God. You see, brother, if he unless we stand up seriously, I will I can find a bit. I, I hope I can get words. Unless uh, emergency. We have to stand up because Jesus warned us in his uh end uh, time mm-hmm. when he said when he said, What shall be the sign when you're coming? Jesus talk about storm, he talk about uh, uh, earth, all those things, mm-hmm. and probably one time. Would you know what he talk about over and over, my brother? False we prophets, hear, yes. Let no man deceive you. you. Hallelujah. Over the first word, be real, take it. No man deceive you. He said, Listen to me. Of everything, you could have 100,000 earthquakes, you're gonna have 1 million deceptions. Hallelujah. Deception, deception shall be the mighty signs of the end time. And the Christians, the Christians are happy. The mm-hmm. in the shade. The Christians are having a hallelujah party. The yeah. Christians are going listen, to a banquet. My beloved, listen, my beloved, bless the name of the Lord. Yes. I'm expecting my sister to call me. So um mm-hmm. so I thank you so much. I'm expecting her to call me at any time. So we definitely okay. bless God for you and um you know we just bless God. Amen. Thank you for your yes, contribution yes. all the time. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you and Amen. Thank bless you. Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. So we await our sister. Hey, caller, good morning. All right, let me see. Do it again if that's you, my sister. Of the Hallelujah. John 8, 32 ministry. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Some great points from our brother here speaking here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So right now we want you to hold the phone lines. We are waiting for our sister John 8, 32 ministry. We bless God for our life. And we thank God for her conversion. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 347-663-8638. Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we encourage you, encourage your heart this morning, child of God. Hallelujah. Let's bless God. Hey, caller, good morning. Good morning, Brother Stryker. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank you so much for taking the time out. No, no problem. Anytime. You know, I try to do my best to uh, join your your ministry to share what the Lord uh, has been sharing with me this past week. So. Hallelujah. A lot has been going on. So, you know, a lot has been going on. And um, before you start off, I want to just let you know, because from time to time we talk like that as followers of Jesus, the weight of the world and the weight of the organized religion comes down on us as if we don't know what we're talking about. But I want to assure you that God is raising up a remnant of people who will say, Thus say it, God. Hallelujah. So be encouraged and let God speak to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. So there. So today, I you know again, I just want to clarify that these are messages that that the Lord shares with me, scripture that He shares with me, and as always, you know, what the Bible says, test the spirit by the spirit. And if you have any questions, you always have to go to God, and of course, wait for His revelation and confirmation. So today, I will be discussing two uh, different, I guess, two different themes. Uh, the first theme, um, you know, uh, is related again back to Halloween and then the second theme is more of an uplifting message for women and men of God. So so I just want to just briefly just kind of mention uh, this. so about, was, was, it, was it Sunday? There was a shooting, right? The Texas shooting. <laughs> and um, you know, a lot of people, I mean I have to tell you, I, I, I my spirit has been grieved, but in, it, more than being grieved, it's also very angry. You know, it's angry and it's frustrated because, you know, I look at this and this could, this incident could have been prevented, you know. And what I'm about to say is why could could have been prevented. As you know, brother, over the last month or so, um, you know, I was sharing what the Lord was telling me. Warn my people, you know, expose Satan's playgrounds. And we went into a thorough discussion back to back about what are Satan's playgrounds, you know, whether it's... Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, remember that he shared that with me late September, and I released it, and then all of a sudden, uh, we had that horrible massacre in Las Vegas, you know, and one of the things that God was illustrating back then was to stay away from Satan's playgrounds, nightclubs, and, and music festivals, uh, you know, casinos, and, you know, uh, psychics, 
uh, strip joints, etc. cetera, you know? Freemason temples. And we ha- again, we had a thorough discussion. And one of the things in that slide back in September was also exposing um, the, 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 the movement of Halloween, that if there are churches or there are people, like in their homes that are celebrating Halloween, what God was telling me is that every ungodly place, every ungodly event, there are angels or demons of death, Okay, they are lurking to take souls straight to hell. Okay, so as you know, you've been following the page, you know, many, many times I've released these messages over and over and over again, warning people, warning Christians, telling you, my Christian friends, God hates Halloween. God is telling me that there is the demons of death here. There's no Halloween for you this year. Enough. If you love your family, if you love God first, and you want to obey Him, and you want to abide in His protection, stay away from all things that are evil. So what happens on Sunday? We see this horrific massacre where a third of the victims here happen to be children. Okay? We as adults, whether we're parents or not, or whether we're teachers or, you know, leaders in our communities that deal with children, you know, when we are leaders in our households or in the community, and there are children there, It is, as a Christian, it is our absolute duty, okay, to give them the gospel. It is our absolute duty to, if God has entrusted us with children, whether whether we're teachers or parents or et cetera, you know, we have a responsibility to God to raise up a new generation of children that are godly, that they know the truth of who God is, that they live a moral and a decent life as, you know, as Christ wants us to live it, Okay. So going back to the church, when this happened, in my spirit, I was like, something is off. Because I know what God says in his word, okay? God says that if you abide in him, he will abide in you. God says in his word that if you are for him, I'm sorry, that he is for us and not against us. God also said in his word in Deuteronomy 28, blessings and curses. If we obey him and his commandments, you know, he is with us, okay? And I look at the Facebook page, and what is the first thing that I saw there. If you go to the if you go to this church, it's the first Baptist church of Southern Springs, Texas. When you go to their page, you will see that they just celebrated Halloween. On November first, they posted all their pictures of their fall festival at the church. And you know what's sad? The first one of the first pictures that I saw was a woman who was dressed up as someone that was injured. She's wearing an I V bag. She is wearing this swing that's holding her arm that's not a swing a <laughs> swing that's holding her arm Hallelujah. okay and she's also carrying a bag of blood okay you know like we you know when people donate blood mm-hmm. and she has all those bandages around her head then i see the pastor I, at first i didn't know it was the pastor but i see a man in this picture that they posted on their facebook page where he's dressed as a pirate and he's wearing, and he's holding on to a sword and two little girls are in front of him. I mean, I'm not <laughs> lying. You can go to the Facebook page. The pictures are posted there. And you know what's sad? The days after the massacre, as there, you know, I came across this my, my news feed of a video about the victims that were lost that day. And I recognized some of the faces there happened to be the same faces that are in that Facebook page days prior. And my heart dropped. And... This the one particular man that was uh, that was in that picture, um, and, and a man, maybe he's one of the people in the you know the, the helpers of the, of the church. Who knows? Him and his family, I believe there were eight members plus himself. They all got killed. Okay, and honestly, all I can tell you, Brother Stryker, you know, it, it's to me it's it's scary, and I'm going to tell you why it's scary. As you probably know, I'm a God fearing woman. Okay, I'm not perfect. But I, I fear God. I love the Lord, and yes, God is God is love, grace and mercy. But I fear the Lord, okay? And I got to tell you, after this incident, I fear her even more. In the sense that when God says, that is not of me, child, when God says, stay away, when God says, if you open up that door, this is what could happen to you, and then it manifests, I'm saying the fear of God has brought like three times more after this incident. Hallelujah. And what's really sad, what's even more sad, and I'm, I'm, I'm right here, what's even more tragic is that you go to the comments on their page, and of course there are a lot of you know people, we send prayers, we send prayers, we send prayers. A lot of even Christians and even non-believers are putting comments on their page, oh, you know, may God comfort them. 
But see, here's the thing. Last night, I came across a news feed again where now non-believers are mocking Christians. Well, where is your God? If your God, you know, if, if this is your church, why didn't God prevent this? And I want to make the, I want to say this, and I want to make the record straight. The culprit here is not God. The culprit here, the assassin here, is Satan. And we as Christians, we got to stop blaming God for our woes. we got to stop blaming God for opening up doors that are, are from the pits of hell. That's what the Bible says, Hosea 4, 6. My people lack for, you know, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And to see so many Christians and to see so many people on TV sending prayers to these people, which is great. But no one, maybe the sermon's not there, maybe they didn't get the revelation there, you know. But to see so many Christians who, not, I would say probably one out of two comments, this is what happens when you allow the enemy to come into your home, into your church, when you are literally sleeping with the devil himself. That's a consequence. So, again, I, I share this with you, yes, because we do have to keep them in prayer, but at the same time, if God has given you revelation about these things, and you are a Christian, mm -hmm. our job is to share what God wants us to share so we can expose the enemy and warn others. Because the truth of the matter is, last week, or week and a half, where all this Halloween took place, out of ten churches, eight out of ten, or seven out of ten churches, have celebrated trunk or treat, fall festivals for Halloween. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you see what they did, though? They changed the name to try to disguise it. You know, it's Halloween, and, and it's amazing how you came up with this. I was just on the phone with a young man speaking, and I don't know if you were listening. I don't, you were listening, you wasn't listening, right? I was not listening. Okay, so you see, you were not listening, even listening. So, th the same thing you were just saying to me, I was just speaking to a young man, and I was saying to him, I was, somebody responded to me, like, I think a pastor and somebody else, say, oh, this is heartless, these people are suffering, and you mentioned that they shouldn't be celebrating Halloween. So, what if they celebrate Halloween? This is a pastor or somebody rep tell, asking me, you know, why are you, I said, well, give me scriptures to back up what you're talking about. You, you, no, no scripture, just talking of the head. So, here what happened. Last night, about two or three o'clock, the Lord just woke me up with a revelation that this young man who they said went to the location. You heard that, right? He went to the location before that. You know that, right? You mean of the church? Yes, he went there before that shooting. You know that, right? Wow. Yes, yeah, they said he went there when they had the Halloween stuff. He, he went there. Mm. He was there with them. He went there. They know him. He's a guy that they know. Know what the Lord showed me. Now, if my house is a house of prayer, and somebody who is troubled and somebody who have problem in their life and they're looking for something that they can identify with God that can redeem them and give them hope they come and see you playing in the devil's field they could come back and destroy you and this is what happened this young man came to that place that's what was revealed to me he came there looking for hope this man was looking for God he was looking for somebody to tell him something to encourage his soul he came there and see them celebrating the devil and the Sunday he came back and destroyed them for the hypocrisy hallelujah this was revealed to me about three o'clock this morning i was wait, wait, who, wait this guy who's this guy though the, the shooter the shooter wow the shooter do it go ahead check it out the shooter is somebody that they know they know him they know this guy this guy came around them he come around them he did so he know that they celebrated this stuff and he came back as you were saying to me he came in a costume he came back the sunday and destroyed them hallelujah wow. so you uh, uh, no 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 the young man was reading the scripture quoted the scripture for me just now look at this here in in luke in luke um, 13 he said there, there were present at this at, at, at the season some that told him of the galatians whom whose blood pilate had mingled with their sacrifices and jesus answered and said and said unto them suppose ye that these galileans were sinners above all galileans because they suffered these things such things i tell you nay but except you repent ye shall all likewise perish or those eighteen which unto whom the tower of siloam fell and slew them think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt at jerusalem i tell you nay but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And God said we should avoid every appearance of evil. If it looks evil, let's not even entertain it. Hallelujah. Right. So what I want to right. say to you, my beloved sister, you have given this thing even before Halloween. You talked about this. You warned about this. And there are many so-called Christians who have nothing wrong with this thing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But what the young man quoted just now again, that is in the Bible. Who do not love the love of the truth? God send them a strong delusion. And they don't believe that God is the one who blind their eyes. They don't love God. They listen to the Bible. They don't believe the Bible. God say he will blind their minds. Mm -hmm. Because they do not love the truth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Go ahead. It's true. And just to kind of add the scripture here that the Lord, you know, as I was doing this ad, I just felt all the scripture that he was putting in my spirit. So if, if, if I may just say the scripture here. Sure. Um, brother. Uh, again, Ephesians chapter six twelve. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. One First Pe Peter five eight. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. John ten ten. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6 verses 14 through 18 followed by 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Do not be yoked, with, to get, do not be yoked together hmm. with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says Hallelujah. the Lord Almighty. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Joshua 24, verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, <laughs> Excuse me. in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. John fifteen seven. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you, have reject, because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. And I have two more verses. James 4.4, 4, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Submit yourselves, James 4.7 says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. So that's, that's, that's the word of the Lord. So God's <laughs> word does not return void. Hallelujah. You know, bless the Lord. You know, God is so amazing. You know, I spent a whole week speaking about reprobate, right? Now, it's mm -hmm. a word and a terminology people use loosely. A reprobate mm -hmm. is a rebel. A person yeah. who have no intention to adhere to the will of God. There are many churches established for years and they have all kind of bickering and fighting and people living in the world, hearing the word of God and refusing to turn to God. Now, God called them reprobates. They are rebel. They don't love God. They have no intention to please God. And what God is saying, to come out from them. Because they will taint you. They will spoil you with their wickedness. They will taint you. A reprobate is a reprobate. A man that has no intention to serve the living God. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So in this time, God is saying he wants his people to come out from those who don't want to serve God. Those who don't have a desire to adhere to the word of God. God is saying, come out. But you know, man, you even today, people use this scripture all the time. Don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. Well, a brethren is somebody who is in like faith with you. 
A brethren is not somebody who is going contrary to the will of your father which is in heaven. So people need to understand that. But people use this kind of scripture to make them feel bound to. That they have to. You must come to a church. You must go to a building. No. If you and I don't have anything in common, I have no right to gather with you. You are against God. You don't want to serve God. You are rebel. You are reprobate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we must preach this thing that people be delivered. Because there are people who are weak in the faith and they feel, well, the bishop say I must come. I don't forsake the assembly. And some sisters say, what happened? We didn't see you last week. Remember the Bible say, don't forsake the assembly. So they feel they are obligated to go to a place, mm -hmm. even if it's unruly, if it's ungodly, yeah, no. they still feel the desire that they must be there because they're violating the Bible. Now, with what you were quoting just now, let me just also compile that with you in Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and, 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 and 6, he said, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For, mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. these things, come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye yeah. partakers with them. For ye was sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I tell that pastor last night, I say, look, pastor, you might call yourself a pastor. You give me a scripture to base what you're talking about, to tell me what you're trying to say. Tell me in a scripture. He couldn't give me not one scripture. Only a bunch of texts. Oh, have a heart. Have a. I say, I have a heart, brother. The Bible said in Galatians 6, if your brother is overtaken in a fault, restore him. Restore him by the word of God. I said, we should have no fellowship with darkness. Don't come and try to come with your, your, your justification and well, this and that. No. Is that you're born again or you're not born again? If you're not born again, you don't have the capacity to lead God people. Hallelujah. Because you're going to lead them from your flesh. You will lead them from Amen. your flesh, from your own brain, from your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's a verse here, you know, as you're saying this. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Hallelujah. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have mm -hmm. nothing to do with such people. You know, I want to share something with you quickly, since I just remembered. So, as, so as well, a few days ago, as I was uh, looking at the pictures again, I'm like, wow, you know, the, the picture of the pastor, and he's dressed as a pirate, and he has a sword. And I said, God, I was like, Lord, I was like, something's up with this picture. Something's going on. I was like, I don't know. I know what a pirate is. But some, I was like, I, I don't know, Father, but something's off. There's a meaning. Why is this pastor dressed as a pirate, God? Why? Why? I kept asking him because I was, I was like, there's something off. You know, usually when, I mean, at least for me, um, I always pray for discernment. And, um, but for me, it's like when, I, when I discern something's off, I may not know exactly what it is, but when I seek the Lord, and he, he, he reveals it to me. I'm like, oh, I knew that was it. I knew something was off. That, that's what it was, you know? And let me tell you something. I, I, I was having a conversation with God. I was like, I was like Father, so why is this pastor wearing a, a, a pirate's outfit? Why is, what's the purpose of a pirate? So, of course, most people say, oh, well, it's a pirate. Who cares, you know? <laughs> it's so cute. You know, it make, it's no harm. But think about this. I, I went to, the, I went to uh, Google to look for the definition of the word pirate. And I came across the definitions and I came across the word, the synonyms of this word, of this meaning. Now, as we all know, we, we have a basic understanding of what a pirate is, but I'm going to say it anyway. A person who robs or steals, right, or commits illegal violence at sea or on the shores of the sea. Okay, well, I guess that's a pretty generic or standard uh, definition. Mm -hmm. But let's look at the terminology here. Any plunderer, predator, Okay, a person who uses or reproduces the work or invention of another without authorization. Okay, and then, I, huh. and then there's a whole bunch of things to commit piracy, to plunder, to steal. I came across some synonyms, uh, a thief. I came across the synonym of counterfeit. Brother Stryker, tell me, who does that really represent? Hallelujah, we know it. Who is the stealer? We Who know is it. the plunderer? Hallelujah. Who is the pillager? Who Hallelujah. is the one that steals, kills, and destroys that? Who is the one? Just like this definition says. Hallelujah. A person who uses or reproduces the work or invention of another without authorization. Hallelujah. You know, who is the one that Hallelujah. commits illegal violence? Glory. It's the devil himself. Hallelujah. 
You see, my beloved, that's why the criteria for to enter into the kingdom of God is to be born again. Many pastors are not born again. Now, when I just got born again, I, I hear Pastor Ferdinand, you know, that's one of my strong mentors. I mean, you know, when it comes to the Bible, you know, this man always going to quote you a scripture. We bless God for his life today. Let me say this. Now, I hear him always saying, many pastors are not born again no i thought that was kind of strange and you know you you're just born again you thinking wow that's kind of a rough statement to make you know what i mean and even when we talk about jesus somebody might say oh come on that's kind of heartless i mean let's you know what i mean no but now i come to realize and understand what you're saying it's just like what you just said now the thief come to steal kill and destroy if you have the spirit of god there are certain things you're just not going to do certain things you could not practice if you are filled with God's spirit certain things you will not be able to do it you, you, you mm -hmm. just can't do it if you if you feel with God's spirit you cannot cheat on your wife you just can't do it you won't be able to go on a pulpit and preach week after week knowing you are sleeping with a woman in the in the congregation or you are treating your wife wrong you can't do it if you feel with That's God's right. spirit God chasing those he loved that's what he said those who are in him he convict them of sin that they get right, right. that they are able that's to right. be clean when they get on the pulpit when they're going to declare God they could not be living in sin and still claim <laughs> declaim Jesus and also what Jesus does he show it to his congregation okay if a man is not authorized he preaching about God God will show you that this man is not authorized he will say things right in front of the yeah. congregation for those who have ears to hear will hear those who have eyes to see will see those who are blind will sit there and just go along with the flow oh i'm great man of god oh, da, 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 da. but there's somebody will say uh-uh this is off this man have no right to say what he said or do whatever because why god is faithful he said he will lead you into all truth if it's a spirit of right. truth it will be a witness that does said god this is the house of the lord this is jesus this is purity of faith this is what it is and you preach what people need to hear which is to repent and serve the living god you know i was talking about jesus christ is the redeemer we don't need no deliverer and service jesus is the deliverer what man have to do is repent and turn to God. That's it. We don't need no deliverance yes. ministry. We don't need nothing. Jesus have already it paid the you. price for everybody. So all this business that man make with the name of God to keep people in bondage and to keep people thinking that they need they could live in sin, but let me pray for you. No, I don't have to pray for you. Repent. You repent. Mm -hmm. Re redemption is here for you. You need to just repent and receive it. That's all. It has been paid in full. We don't need no deliverance service every week. You go and get rid of your sin. You know what your problem is. Your sin is your problem. That is why you're doing what you're doing. Or there is sin in the camp, sin in your house, whatever. Sin is there. That's the main problem. Once we get rid of sin, we are, we are in line with God. We are in line with Jesus. He is the deliverer. He has come. He has paid it in full. We don't need no deliverance service. Hallelujah. He is the ultimate deliverer. And sin is a reproach to any nation, any man. Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we bless his holy name this morning. I want to thank you so much for sharing. And I want to I want to encourage you because I know your testimony. I know where you came from. Now hear this. The devil always wants to steal the testimony. He always wants to make you believe what has happened to you didn't really happen to you. What you think you're hearing from God, you're not really hearing from God. Maybe it's just your mind. No, 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 no. You need to let that devil know. Devil, I know who I was and I know who I am. And once I'm preaching, thus said God in the word of God, I'm right with God. Don't care what happened. Once I'm preaching, thus said God, it is the word of the Lord. It shall never return unto him void. So I want to encourage you, my beloved sister. Bless God for your life today. Let no weapon that is formed against you shall ever prosper once you're on the side of the Lord Jesus. So be encouraged in your walk. Be encouraged in your walk. Here again, for you as a young lady. Now, a lot of people will join on to you. They might look at you. Oh, you're good looking. Oh, you're this, you're that, you're that. Oh, you sound so nice. Yeah. When they come on to you, if what you are preaching is, is in the word of God, many will fall away. Many will drop away. Many will leave you just where they met you and never, ever call you again, never deal with you. This is biblical. That's what it is. So what God does, he give you a season when you are able to tell them certain things. If they don't want it, they will walk away and leave you. But guess what? On that day of judgment, it will be against them that you have told them the truth. And you know, Paul said, no, I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. 
Hallelujah. Right. So what I want to encourage you as you run your race, say hallelujah, glory to God. We live in see Jesus. Jesus in, <laughs> in, in the upper room, there's 120 people. Jesus performed many miracles. Hallelujah. Many people followed Jesus all over in the upper room, 120. Hallelujah. Noah preached for how many years? Hallelujah. Glory to God. After that, eight people got saved. Was he successful? Yes, he was. Glory to God. Why? He stayed with the message of Jesus, whether or not they hear or they forbear. We in this generation have the same cloud of witness that is with us to perform the work of the Father. Who hear? Who don't hear? Guess what? God said it. We believe it. We stand with it. He is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless God, bless God. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pray us out or you have anything else you wanna share? Well, I don't know how much time do we have. Um, we have the sir. time. Go ahead, talk to me. We talk have the time. To well, I, I so now I like I mentioned earlier there was that that uh, more um how do I say that warning message. Now I, I kind of also wanna kinda shift a little bit more up, uplifting for uh, women and men. You know, God uh, put this in my spirit a couple of weeks back, and I kept hearing uh, Proverbs 31.10, uh, which is a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. And then the scripture continues, her husband has full confidence in her, and she la and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So it was pretty much a message that I heard in my spirit, and I wanted to encourage the, the body of Christ, and, and obviously specifically women, that if this is uh, the time. You know, this is the time for that the, you know, we, the, the you know, that we, the church, and, and 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 if you are a Christian woman, you have to, we have to have a heart check with the Lord. We have to examine ourselves. Are we the Christian women that God wants us to be, or are there some things about us that it's still crooked? And if, it, and if it is, we have to repent of that, you know. You know, we see how the, 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 our society, not only nationally but globally, you know, um, is in a moral decay, it's in a spiritual decline, uh, and even more so uh, they're pushing the LGBTQ and, and you know, uh, agenda that we have to be honest here. This LGBTQ indoctrination, okay, is decimating millions of lives and now even children and the you I know mean, and of course we know that this movement has been created for decades but we have to also admit and recognize that the leader the kingpin of this movement was obama this happened two years ago the minute that president obama former president obama put those lights of the, of the rainbow in that White House, he brought that curse upon this nation. And you know, and then as he t was president, he kept traveling all over the world to enforce that agenda. You know, just yesterday, I saw an article in Germany where now Germany has legislated policy for it to recognize a third gender. Okay, and that same policy is very similar to what we have now in California. So what I'm trying to say is, as we see the spirit of Antichrist, the, the evil spirits of perversion, perdition, corruption, confusion, and witchcraft, and Islam, and now LGBT, you know, this is all part of the enemy's plans to continue to decimate not only the family, but also society. We're seeing children that are confused. I have a brother in Christ who's a teacher, and he weeps because these children need parents. They need godly parents. And I'm here to encourage this message that the, the, the Christians who... Um, we the church, if, you know, we have to, again, have a, a heart check with the Lord. We have to have a true conversation with God and say, God, purify us. God, cleanse us. Make me that man or woman of God that you want me to be. I don't want, I don't want to be a hypocrite. God, there is a world that is hungry for truth. There's a world that is hungry for righteousness. And if I have been blessed to know you guys, I have been blessed to be picked out to be your child, to know your voice, to know your word, I have your Holy Spirit. Now it's the time to rise up and declare, you know, declare the word of God in public, in church. And not only just declare the scripture, but for us to be a living scripture. And this is more of this message is also going towards, uh, you know, the women. Listen, I know there's a feminist spirit. It's a Jezebel spirit. I see it in the church. God has given me a, a, over and over a lot of revelation about that Jezebel spirit inside the church. And if there are women that are listening to this program, and if your church has had women pastors, I hate to tell you, but they're out of order. Revelation 2.20, okay? It's, that's what the scripture God gave me almost a year ago. These women are out of order, okay? I see women in the church, even Christians, they're acting like hypocrites. Some of them are acting like harlots. 
Some of them are flirting. They are they're walking with immodesty. They're walking with selfishness, pride. They're walking with arrogance and competition and envy. You know, I mentioned this a while, a few, uh, not too long ago, that Christian women. And I've been to Christian women groups, like, like, oh, fellowship, and I've seen the spirits of pride and envy and competition and arrogance among them. And when I, as a former non-believer, cannot distinguish a group of women that are worldly versus a group of women that are Christian, and they both look the same, that is a problem. So again, this message is for the women, these on fire, Bible literate, prophetic, God fearing women of God, and there's some out there, okay, who 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 is who is a woman of, of course, not perfection because none of us are perfect, but are, who are women that really, really love the Lord in truth and in spirit. I want this message, and if also they're married, but I want them to know that a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than for she is worth far more than rubies. You are more precious than rubies, you know, and. And in, in, in tangent with that message, the other day um, I heard the Lord speak to my, my spirit as I was doing, doing this ad uh, to remind and encourage the women of God, those on-fire women, those God-fearing, virtuous women, that they are more precious than rubies. I also heard the Lord in my, in my spirit, the, the scripture, uh, the wife is the crown of her husband. So I, I looked it up. I, I kept hearing crown. I kept hearing crown. And I found the verse here, Proverbs twelve four, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones, okay? And that's the problem. A lot of people, a lot of men, and I mean, this message is mostly for the men out there. You know, I've ministered to uh, married people before. Uh, I ministered to young men who have relationship problems, and even women alike. And, you know, once again, this is just an example that God's Word does not return void. You know, we live in a world that is false. Uh, we live in a world where, if, for example, in, in from the likes of Hollywood, they promote sex. Now they're promoting even more perversions and more sexual morality and the lust of the flesh. And a lot of people, even Christians, they're starting to embrace that. Uh, you know, when you have 70% of Christians inside the church who have, a, who have an addiction to porn, and even some of them are even pastors or leadership, that is a problem. And this is why it's so important that we have to dis discuss what spiritual warfare is. We need to ask the Lord, you know, and, and to walk in, to continue to walk in the prophetic. And if it's God's will to to give us the gifts of deliverance, the gifts of healing, you know, it's so we can so we can allow our, you know, we can allow the Lord to use us to set people free. There are a lot of people in bondage, a lot of men in bondage. You know, a lot of men, even Christians, if they had a choice between a godly woman or an ungodly one, chances are they're going to choose the latter because it's the lust of the flesh. And I'm here to encourage that this message, you know, our, our nation, uh, this world needs strong, solid men and women of God. Uh, the, the Lord gave me this um, scripture as I was doing this ad again, Proverbs 5, verses 1 through 8, and this is for the married men out there. This is a beautiful, beautiful scripture that uh, King David was uh, giving to Solomon, and it says, the whole subject here is be faithful to your wife, okay? My son, if you listen closely to my wisdom and good sense, you will have sound judgment, and you will always know the right thing to say. The words of an immoral woman may be as, may be as sweet as honey and as smooth as olive oil, but all that you really get from being with her is bitter poison and pain. If you follow her, she will lead you down to the world of the dead. She has missed the path that leads to life and doesn't even know it. My son, listen to me and do everything I say. Stay away from a bad woman. Don't even go near the door of her house. And this is a warning message. If there are men that are listening, listen, uh, this is, and, I, and I, 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 before I even say this message to the men, married men, I want to tell this to the married women. And I minister to them all the time. If you are a Christian married woman, first and foremost, you need to make sure that you seek God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit, and that God comes first in your life, number one. And if it's not, you got to spend some time with the Lord. you got to repent and ask God to put you in that situation, in that, in that, in that prayer uh, time, and ask God so you can put him first in your life. God comes first over your life, ladies, not your husband, not your children, not your church, not your friends. God is a God of order. That's number one. Number two, 
assuming that there are Christian women, married women, who put God in their who put God first in their lives, your job, your second job is is to pray for your husbands, pray and then pray for your children, and then of course everything other everything else that's added into your life, right? And why do I say this with such uh, with with such I, I implore them to do so? Because let me tell you something. Again, the devil is busy. You'll be surprised how many conversations I've had with married men and women who God has shown them, first of all, and more I would say married women, who have shown them that there is a seductress that is trying to come against their marriage. We live in a fallen world. You cannot just be a Christian man or woman of God and sit back and relax and, oh, I'm a Christian, I go to church, I'm good to go, I have nothing to worry about. No, you have to be vigilant and be sober because the one thing that the devil hates is marriage. The one thing he hates is a family, okay? And it is our responsibility to be these fervent prayer warriors for our spouses as well as for our children. Now, with that being said, if you are a married man, oh, and it's also plus for a married woman, okay, you have to hear what the Word of God is saying here. Be faithful to your wife. And now I would say this also applies to married women, right? Be faithful to your spouse, your husband. We, as Christians, if you know, we have to close every door, every window. If there is an opportunity where we can fall by accident or intentionally with the spirit of lust, with this, you know, whether it's flirting. I, I, I released an ad last year where um, there are married people who are flirting with their exes on Facebook on social media, you got to stop right now, if that is you, because you are opening up doors and windows that God said never to open. A married person, everything changes when you're married. You have to show respect, number one, to the Lord, and number two, you have to show respect to your spouse, to your children, and to your home and your family, and let the world know that in this house, you serve God, that in this house, not only are you a Christian that goes to church on Sundays or whatever you go, but you are a Christian that is a woman and man of God, that you say, I don't want sin in this home. I don't want the devil's curses to curse what God has blessed in this marriage, in this home. And you need to be bold about it, because I'm telling you, it's so sad I see so many of my friends who are on their second divorce, and this is the problem. And there is a world of hurt out there, even among Christians. When you have a, a when the when the when the the statistics of divorce are just about the same in the church like it is in the world, that is a problem. So I just want to urge this as just a word of encouragement that. You know what? Life is not perfect. Yes, we have trials. Yes, we have tribulations. Yes, you know, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, things in, the, in this life, whether it's our job or our finances or our family, you know, sometimes they can kind of frustrate us. But at the end of the day, if God has blessed you with an excellent wife or an excellent husband, honor it. Thank the Lord. Give him praise. Give him gratitude. God, thank you for this woman. You know, I humble myself before you. And that's what a man of God should be praying for. He should be giving God praise for a wife of noble character, that she is, you know, that it's, the, it's her spirit, it's her heart after God, it's the, that she will not do any harm towards her husband. A man, a husband that can trust his wife, a man that if, if, if the whole town would talk bad about her because perhaps they are jealous or envious of their relationship, that husband would know that is a lie. I know my wife. I know who she is. She is a gift, and I, and I have the discernment, and I give God praise. And I'm not going to believe in the lies of what the church or the world may be talking about my life because I know her. And that's a blessing. And the same thing applies for, for women. If you know you have a good husband, a husband, not perfect, but a good husband that loves you, that respects you, that treats you well, that also provides you, who is the head of the family. You know, God is the head, sorry, God is the head of the family, but the, the husband is the head of the wife. And you know that women, we need to give that spot to men because that's how it's supposed to be. The husbands are the head of the wife. And you, and you know that that man is a good man. He's responsible. He has a heart after God. He, he wants to love people. He has a heart after people. You as a wife, in addition to praying for them, you also got to give God praise. 
You also got to give God, thank you, Lord, for this man of God. No, Father, he's not perfect. There's a couple of things that, he, that, you, that, he needs, that you need to work in him, just like you have to work in me. But, Father, I say thank you. And let God be God and do what he has to do. And let him have his way in your marriage. Let him, let his hand of protection, favor, anointing, blessing, and, yes, correction in this household, in that marriage, so God can be glorified. So I just share that message with you because I'm telling you, I, I'll be honest with you, and I'm, I'm just going to close it out right now, Pastor, is that as I minister to my non-believing and believing friends, I'll be honest with you, I see more reception from my non-believing friends than my believer friends. I see it. They're hungry. And as someone that's been in the world, I know what the world offers. I know what's out there. But at the same time, as a Christian, you know, we, uh, the Christians, uh, a lot of us also have departed from the ways of God. And it has come to a point that when I can't even distinguish who is a Christian versus who is a non-believer, that's a serious issue. And this is why it's so important. It's so important that we, the body of Christ, the remnant, rises up and lead by example to tell the world that this is what we, you can have too. This is the life that God wants to give to all his children if we just seek him if we just repent, if we just sin no more, and do it His way. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, my beloved, I, I just bless God for, uh, you know, the way He aligns things together and have us that we can relate to each other. Uh, even the time and dispensation in which we are preaching these things, we can align. Now, Titus 2 says, But speak thou the things which become its sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity in patience the aged woman likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young woman to be sober to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet chaste keepers of home good obedient to their own husbands that the word of god be not blasphemed and, and and it's so important that we understand that in the context of scripture and as what is given to the body of christ now as you were saying before which we are supposed to know that god is the head of the church and then the man is the head and then the wife then the family of God is the foundation of the church of Jesus Christ. So every other person coming into the body of Christ will see a representation of what God's church look like. So it's so important for us to understand even as husband and wife, no man should destroy that union. No pastor should tolerate a wife who wants to be away from her husband in the congregation because it creates a riff for those looking on. Amen. He creates a rift. And many pastors are, are happy to have a woman who husband, he goes to another church. You understand me? They're happy because we have another member. At least one, we get some money over here too. They should not tolerate that because it gives a bad representation of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the young people who we tell him to get married, if they see that example, why should they want to get married? If married people don't stay together, what is the point? If they cannot represent in the congregation a husband and a wife, then why should I get married? I don't want to. I mean, I'm, I'm doing better by myself because my boyfriend sits close to me. We're not married and we're together. People who are married are separated. Then what's the point of being married? That's why he said that the name, look at it. Glory to God. Hey, Amen. Look at it here. That the, the word of God be not blasphemed. You understand? Because people need to see that the word of God is working. The word of God is right. What God has prescribed for the church is being manifested and it's working. It's good. Everyone who come into the body of Christ see the representation of what God has prescribed for his people. So it's so important. And again, with what we were talking about, when we talk about the reprobate, there are people in church for 30 years and a young sister come to the church and they, will, they don't have no manners. They don't have nothing to teach you. Because they themselves are disobedient to their own husband and you come into the church and they have nothing when they should have something to tell you or to teach you or to show you what it means to be a woman of God. That's why he's saying, and the age woman, likewise, th that they be in behavior as become it holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, 
love their, own, their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us of good of, of at home, good obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Something you have mentioned also as you were making what saying making the statement. What people need to understand. If you are married, you have made an oath to God that you will do what he prescribed in the conversation as it relates to a husband. It means you can deny yourself from going to heaven if you violate that covenant of God. People need to understand that because obeying God has nothing to do with obeying your husband. Or, or obeying your husband have all to do with obeying God because this is what God wants you to do submit to your own husband this is a commandment of Jesus we need to understand that so you're not trying to submit to your husband for your husband's sake you understand because we have this culture now where women feel they're equal with man so if you submit to your husband oh girl what happened to you you losing it or what don't you know you make the money in the house this man couldn't tell you what to do he's uneducated you have your bachelor degree whatever you see they forget that what they are doing is obedience to god and not to man hallelujah amen and i just want to clarify it's not i'm just not clarify i just want to add a quick uh, uh, mention here i said just like the next scripture where it says uh wives submit to your husband the last verse to well, the, the continuous continuing verse to that is husbands love your wives like Christ loves them, and that's something that I also want to emphasize because a lot of the times men kind of forget that you know you have to love them, you have to have patience, you have to have understanding. You know, women tend to be a little bit more emotional than than you know than than men. You know, and I think it's really important that you know men uh, and women alike that we should just humble ourselves. Listen, no one's perfect. You know, you know, we all have had our past. We've all had our traumas. There's some issues that God, uh, you know, also continues to, you know, deal with us and, and heal us in the process, you know. And this is why it's so important that we as Christians, you know, I think one of the things that we also have to keep in mind is that a lot of Christians, you know, or even just, even people in general, they're more, they're more obsessed or they're more um, intrigued by the fascination of a big wedding and not so much the marriage. And I think it's time to kind of flip the conversation. You know, you want to focus more on the marriage than the actual wedding, you know. And to keep, and, and also it, and when it comes to marriage and all, keep it simple. Listen, you can, you can spend 100 grand on a wedding, and it can crash and burn in six months if God's hands went on it. I've seen it happen already. I've seen it happen. And then, you know, and like you said, it's an oath, it's a covenant. I think it's time that the body of Christ, the ones that are married, the ones who are on fire for God, the ones who are trying to obey what the Word of God says and want to walk in the Spirit of the Lord, it's time for them to have this thorough conversation and be transparent. No, marriage is not a picnic. Marriage is not like what you see in the movies. You know, because at the end of the day, we're still human. Yes, we're Christian. Yes, we're Spirit-filled. Yes, we love the Lord. But we're still human. And there are days that may perhaps at work is exhausting, or I'm tired, or I don't want to talk today, or I had an argument with someone at work, or I, there was traffic at home. Whatever it may be, we as, as Christians, we need to have a thorough conversation. Listen, marriage is a covenant with the Lord. It's not meant to be a Disney, a Disney movie or some chick flick movie. This is where, you know, there, there are going to be times that God may put your marriage to a test. In many forms, the loss of a job, financial problems, uh, the, the the loss of a child, disease. I mean, it could be a multiple number of things, you know, and we don't know, right? But it's just one of those things that this is where it's so important that we have to be cemented on the on the Lord, cemented on His Word and the Holy Spirit first, because you know I've also seen idolatry among married couples, and that's a sin. No, you don't have your, your you don't have the the statues. You don't like 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 the Catholics do, but your spouse or your kid or anything else, your car, your job, whatever it is that's your idol. And if you don't repent and sin no more, God will remove those idols. And I've seen that also. That it's one thing to love your spouse. It's one thing to respect them and and love on them and like Christ wants us to love on them. And it's a totally different story when our spouse is our idol, or our children are, or whatever it may be. And God hates that because he's not going to share his glory with anyone, you know? So I think it's also important, too, and I, as I minister to young women, um, you know, you know, they were in relationships where they idolized the man, and now God has healed them and where it's all about the Lord, you know? So I think it's really important, again, as Christians, 
that we we have a thorough conversation. Yes, I love my spouse. Yes, I love my children. But you know what? I worship the Creator. I thank the Creator for these blessings. I thank the Creator for my spouse, my children, my job, our home, our finances, whatever it may be. I thank God for all those things because it all belongs to Him, and I'm just here borrowing it. But the owner behind all these things, behind my husband, behind my or my wife, or you know, whatever your spouse, your kids, whatever, is God. God gives, God takes away, God humbles, God exalts, God promotes, God demotes, and God will not be mocked. And yes, I thank you for my spouse, thank you, Father, for my spouse, but Lord, I worship you. Lord, I thank you for the blessings, I thank you for the promise, but you're my joy, Father, you're my joy. Thank you, husband, thank you, wife, thank you, children, I love you too, and you you make me laugh, and, and you're awesome, but God, you're my joy. And the minute that we can have a thorough conversation like that, Everything changes because now we can trust in God. I mean, I, I talk to people, you know, even our families, our parents, our siblings, they can all be Christian. They can be in ministry, but we're still human. And God is faithful. God is true. And I'm sorry, but I have to say this. In my experience, the only one that has been faithful over and over and over in my, in my lows, in my highs, and God, and who's always there 24-7, has been God. Always. He always lends an ear. So my family, they try, but sometimes they fall short. You see what I mean? My relationships, they fall short. And I think when we depend on people and trust in people and rely on people and we're leaning on people and not the Lord, that's when we have problems. And it's really time to really talk about this, that it's so important to lean on God alone and and worship the Creator alone. That's it. Bless God indeed. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to thank you so much once again for taking the time out to share with us John 832. I love the ministry name. I really love it. The truth shall set you free. <laughs> Amen. We bless God for Jesus. I thank God for my salvation this morning and we thank God for yours that he has called us from darkness into light and he has given us the hope of eternal life. So let's lift him up and let's bless him this morning. So if you want to close, you want to pray for our audience, our congregation here. Hallelujah. That God will bless us and open the eyes of our understanding that we may able to lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, Abba, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord God, for this morning. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for your love, mercy, and grace in the name of Yeshua, Lord. Father, I, would, I just pray right now that you, if it is your will, God, anoint my lips. Father, I pray that this message today, this conversation came from you as we shared your scripture, as we share your revelations and, and the messages, God. I pray that the people had an open eye, open eyes, open ears mind, body, soul, heart, and spirit to what you're saying, what's in your word, and the warnings that you also share with many of your of your children, God. I pray that you would break the shackles, break the chains, remove the veils, remove the scales, remove things that are not, Father, that are not of you off your people, God, so they can see, Lord. You know, it's your word, Father. The truth will set you free, God. It's you. You are the truth. You are the way. You are the life, God. And I know, Father, I see people that are hungry, Father, for truth. They're looking for it desperately. God, and I pray a blessing over everyone, including the minister and all those that are listening, God, that they realize and they remember and they and they were able they were able to just uh, examine the, the times that we are in, God, the sense of urgency, God, that there is a world in pain and that is hurting and that is looking for answers, looking for the truth, God, and we have the privilege, we have the honor to know you. Many of us can say, oh, yes, we know your word. Many of us can say, oh, we know and we hear your voice, Abba, or Jesus, or Holy Spirit. We hear your voice, God, and we want that same relationship that we have with you, Father, that others can also get to know you, God, that they will not, that they will not walk in this world feeling abandoned, that they will not walk in this world feeling lost and, 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 and hitting more walls, God. Father, I pray that you will break our hearts of the things that break yours. And I pray that today's message, Father, in addition to speaking it to them, I also pray that they, if, they, if, if, if they can discern and know that this came from you, Lord, that they will be bold enough to share it with others, God. Father, your word says in Ezekiel chapter 3 or 33, God, yeah, about, you know, um, that if we, don't, if we don't relay your messages, God, to people to warn, and something happens to them, there will be blood on our hands, Father. And I know what you put in my spirit a few weeks back, and you kept reminding me, Lord, that many in the church have blood in their hands, whether they're the leaders or, 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 the, or the congregants, there are 
are because we're so afraid to speak the truth. We're so afraid to preach your gospel. We're so afraid of, of being rejected or being, you know, word cursed or being verbally abused or whatever it is, God. But you, God, God, you said in your word that you would anoint our lips. God, you say to preach your, uh, the, your gospel and you told the Father to pick up our cross and follow you, Lord. So, Father, I pray that you will give your church that boldness, that courage, that you are for us and not against us, that you will place a table before our enemies and that we're not afraid because you are you are our shepherd, you are our rock, you are our redeemer, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. I pray that you would protect uh, my, my brother here and all those that are watching, um, that all those that are listening. I pray that you would protect them, guide them, bless them, God. Father, I pray that they would come to you with a repentant heart, that we all repent in this hour, Father, because your word says that in Romans 3.10, no one is righteous, no one is good, Lord. And I pray, Father, for more humility among us, more integrity, more compassion, more mercy, Lord. Not, not just for us, God, but to give us those gifts, God, the gifts of compassion and mercy that we, you know, we, so many of us, we ask that you give us, we ask that you are like that with us, but then when it comes to our brother or when it comes to the stranger, we don't offer what we, we don't offer the same gift that you give to us, Lord. So, Father, we pray for forgiveness for that, Lord. So, Father, again, give us the gift of compassion, mercy, grace, integrity, honesty, conviction, Lord, as we minister to your people. Wherever we may be, God, always lead us. Give us that word of correction, God, and that we are open to receive it because you are a God that loves, but you're also a God that rebukes too. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. Continue to guide us, and, and I, pray, I pray a blessing over all of them. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless you, beloved. Bless God. Have a blessed day. And thank you so much again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister. God bless you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah, glory to God. We hope you enjoyed the segment this morning. We bless God for you. And uh, as our prayer always on Choice Radio, we ask God to give us discernment, to make us understand, make us to be a part of this thing that we can come together in the word of the Lord. Amen. Ask Him for discernment. Ask Him to show you. And most of all, ask Him to be born again. That you have a new spirit, new creation. That the things of heaven become one with your spirit that you understand it you are with God uh, in this fight against principalities and powers amen so that's our cry that's our call for you every listener and choice radio ask God to lead us into all truth amen he kept his promise he promised the Holy Ghost he did send him hallelujah we couldn't do what we do if we're not led by Jesus himself hallelujah we're not that smart we bless God this morning All right. Definitely call a rise right here on the Choice Radio. God bless you. And the rest of the day, be blessed of the Lord. We keep seeking deeper depths and higher heights in Christ Jesus. Hope that the word of God reaches us in the right place where we are willing to adhere to the Holy Scriptures. You know, I mean, God hate pride. He wants us to be, you know, accept the chastening of the Lord when he tells us. And he brings us to the Scriptures. He shows us the points he's talking about. So we bless the Lord this morning for the sister and calling and sharing the Scriptures. And we just thank God for what he's doing among us. Amen. We ask him for more discernment, more understanding and revelation knowledge that we will rightly dis discern the times in which we are living that we'll be ready 
ready for whatever comes. Amen. If you have listened to the program this morning and you have not yet received Jesus, you hear us talking about Jesus. You understand all this. Amen. But you have not, co not committed your life. Amen. That's its important part to commit your life to his care. Amen. That he can raise us from the dead after we die in this physical body. Amen. And he wants us to repent because as the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die, then come the judgment. We already know man die every day. Amen. So we know that. So God is saying there is a judgment after you die. I mean, hey, you, you know what, guys? You know, we might not believe all these things. Listen, like a fish in the sea, right? He thinks in the sea is all that there is but guess what above the land plane of flying the skyscrapers you know what I mean but he believe in the sea that's all there is he think he he got it made <laughs> you know <laughs> you know but look at what's going on above here so god said there is a life beyond this life hallelujah god said as appointed unto man wants to die and then there is a judgment let us believe him he's he was here from everlasting he know everything hallelujah and he's reaching out to us that we can reach out to him so if you, you're there this morning you're driving your car you have not born again you're not yet born again you believe there is a god hallelujah you have some identification in religion or whatever but you have not given your heart to jesus you have not turned to the lord for salvation hallelujah what we ask in you this morning that you will acknowledge the Lord Jesus and ask him to come into your heart today receive him as your Lord and Savior that you can have hope to eternal life hallelujah we bless God for every leader every pastor every man of God everybody hallelujah God is calling his people to rise up hallelujah in these last days to bring the harvest into the barn hallelujah glory to God so if you want to receive Jesus this morning I want you to say this prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Coming to God is a hard decision. You have come to that place in your life when you know that you need a Savior. Amen. Regardless to what it is that you have, you still know that if you die now, you need to have the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. So we bless the name of the Lord this morning and we thank God for each and every one of you out there in Radio Land. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's say this prayer now and mean it from the bottom of your heart if you want to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paid the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sins and to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me and to take control and to help me become the kind of person that you want me to be. And I thank you, Father, for loving me in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah glory to God if you have said that prayer you said devil hey I will serve God my father in heaven I bless the name of God this morning and now today I have hope of eternal life if I die now devil hallelujah I'm gonna go on to glory hallelujah now seek water baptism which represent dying to that self and raising up in Christ Jesus with the hope of hallelujah redemption hallelujah to the blood of Jesus so now seek water baptism ask God to lead you to a Bible believing church hallelujah we can grow in the word of God where your faith can grow stronger your commitment to Christ can go stronger your holiness and commitment to God will be evident signs will follow you men will know you no longer what you used to be hallelujah signs will follow them that believe so continue with the Lord Jesus keep reading your Bible if you can't read the Bible remember go to the library tell somebody who you trust hey say guess I can't read amen so God will send somebody to help you to read the Bible and stuff so there's no pride with God if you come to God they have good things you can do but maybe you cannot read I'll let you were never exposed to reading nothing wrong with that don't feel shame 
Don't be shy. There are things you can do that somebody else cannot do. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless God for this great plan of salvation. Jesus. Hallelujah. Walked among men. Died and rose again. Brethren, I don't think we understand what we're talking about here. Hallelujah. So we bless God. Hallelujah. For this great promise of salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, to everybody this morning who are listening to the program. Those of you praying for Choice Radio. Those of you supporting us. We bless God for you. Jesus Christ is Lord. One thing we tell people on the radio. Once it's the Bible. Let us say, God, I want to understand this. Don't be stout against God. Don't rebel against the word of God. No, you're wrong. Hallelujah. That's the Father. Hallelujah. And he chastened those he loved. Even if you're in religion and you fall away from the faith, don't, don't rebel against God. If God is trying to call you back or restore you back to faith in Jesus, stand up. Face your father. Hallelujah. Acknowledge the word of God. Hallelujah. Husband, wife, hey. Stand up before your father. Clean up your heart and get back right with God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's your father. He loves you. What a loving God. Hallelujah. When we were nothing, hallelujah, he called us to be something. So be blessed. All those online, wherever you are, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let no man despise thy youth. And some of you, you are caught up in, in, in foul places where God doesn't dwell. His spirit is not there. But you feel confined because they tell you, don't forsake the assembly. No, 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 no. If you're not serving God, I'm not going to join with you. Hallelujah. To rebel against my Father in heaven. No. Hallelujah. Stand up. Bless God. Stand with Jesus. Stand with the truth. Hallelujah. Stand in a place where it's holy ground. Hallelujah. Where men fear God and tremble before his name. That's what you need. A leader who fear God. Not a proud man. Proud talking, talking stuff. No. You want to go where a man is a prayer warrior. Prayer before God. He's hallelujah. Re -re -re yeah. Submit to God. Amen. You want to be where people fear God. People have reverence for God. Say, what? This is the house of the Lord. You're mad. You can't do that here. Hallelujah. We would. That's what we need to cultivate the spirit of God that God can manifest and teach his people how to war against Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your anointing today. As always, we just thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Thank you for everything that you're doing as you continue to raise us up for your purpose, your glory, and your honor. Be glorified, Father. Hallelujah in your son today. In the name of Jesus. And all your people out there that is rebel on fire for you. Let them burn. Hallelujah. For the word of God. God bless you everybody. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Now the time to get distracted And this is not the time to go off course This is not the time to lose your focus Got a word to do for the Lord And you cannot afford to lose your way You come too far from where you started so please don't let the time you've so be wasted On things that you later regret Wishing you never had Once you realize it wasn't worth it Your destiny Is too important to give up for anything
patient waiting on the other side of this test It's everything you've ever dreamed, everything you prayed for Everything he promised you that you'd get Waiting on the other side of temptation Waiting on the other side of this test Is everything you've ever dreamed, everything you prayed for Everything he promised you that you'd get So hold on and don't let go Hold on Everything you prayed for, everything he promised you.